<laughs> you, you ever think that, that, that guys are just scrolling on Twitter, read one of your tweets, and, and, and just... I need to off now. If there are only two of us left in the world. Uh -huh. Oh, no. It's uh, on site. We're, <laughs> we're, we're f I was with a guy recently who's like a 27-year-old virgin. How was that? Damn. Not great. I made a tweet about it. Oh. <laughs> of course you did. You're like, huh? Oh, and you don't even know what it is. It's a Ooh, new feeling. Graphic image in my head. What is this? <laughs> Stop. This weekend, I'm trying something new on the Down Bad Show. You know, I've had couples on the show before, but this is the first time where I'm going to be doing a live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 7 p.m. Eastern time this Sunday, June 4th. And I'm going to be doing a, a live stream date. Now you guys seen e dates, right? You guys see me go on e dates. You guys seen e dates all across the internet. But I'm gonna do a live date. So I'm gonna set a live date right here in studio, and then I'm just gonna kind of, I'm still gonna host it. I'm gonna commentate over it. I'm, I'm gonna do it from afar. I'm gonna let them have their moment. I love e dates because you can see the messages live. You can see the comments live uh, in person in real time. And sometimes you know a lot of funny suggestions get thrown in. So now you guys will get see a live date happen in person and i'm gonna have the chat there so yeah it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be an interesting time because i actually i've never done this i don't think i've seen anybody do this so i'm very curious to see how this goes down and, and it's gonna be with gabe and a girl he might or might not have a love interest in it's gonna be interesting to see gabe's riz happen in real time tune in 4 p.m pacific time see y'all there it's just us it's just us me rosie and yeah, today we're, um, I feel like, you know, I have, I've had you on so many times now, but we, we, we don't, a lot of people know you from Twitter. She, she goes by Jasmine Rice Girl on Twitter. If you don't follow her already, please do, please do that. Cause she horny tweets a lot and she might just kickstart, you know, you, 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 you ever think that, that, that guys are just scrolling on Twitter, read one of your tweets and, and, and just, I need to off now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I get messages like that. Mm. A lot of every day there's like messages mm. and people are like, oh yeah, I just jumped off to this tweet of yours. And I'm like, all right. Well, I, I, I'm <laughs> curious if, if they're, they're, they're masturbating to, to, to the literal words or it just kickstarts them going on, on on the hub. They probably, right? I think some, I think what it is is like sometimes you, they'll read a tweet of mine right. and it makes them horny. Mm. And then they'll like go through the rest of my profile or like open up my pictures. Or... Oh, yeah. right, 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 right. It, it is a, is a, it's a, it's a masturbation pregame. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess so. But that's not, okay. Okay, <laughs> so wait, like, wait, wait. hold on. <laughs> well, how do we, how do we end off here? <laughs> the, the, what we, I wanted to, to get into today is actually uh, your most viral moments on, on, on Twitter <laughs> is, is, uh, and before the podcast, we were talking about how uh, you, your first tweet that ever went viral was before the pandemic, and uh, this was when you your first tweet. Why, why don't you Why don't you share with the world what, what your first? You know, for the people that don't want to scroll all the way to the yeah the beginning. Um. Okay. So my Twitter journey. I remember I made a Twitter in college uh -huh. as a sophomore, and I only used it with friends for a while, right? But it obviously was a public profile, so I had like hundred followers. And then in 2019, like November or something like that, uh, I was in Singapore and I was in my celibacy area, mm. which I told you, that was like mm. six months of my life where I wasn't having any sex. Mm. I was just like, like Buddhist cleansed. monk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like my body is a temple, like mm. eating healthy, being healthy, no sex, no men. Um, <laughs> not that I, but at the, but, but that's why when this guy finally asked me out on a date, right. uh, I was so excited that I made this tweet about it. And I was like, finally got asked out on a date. I'm about to suck the fuck out of this boy's dick. Damn. <laughs> and, <Left> field. <laughs> so much for a temple. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it got like mini viral, which uh -huh. is like 6k on Twitter, yeah, like 6,000 yeah. likes. Um, but it got me like my first batch of like new followers. So I, uh, I ended up with like, I don't know, maybe like a couple hundred followers. Okay. And then I kept tweeting like out of pocket unhinged stuff <laughs> yeah. about how horny I was right. because I wasn't having sex. So I was like, I told you, I was like doing the series of like days without sex. Uh -huh. And every single day for like 200 days straight, yeah. I had like a joke about not having sex. Mm. So like day 105 without sex, right? Like 
um, drank my boba without chewing so I could choke on some balls again or like right, 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 right. yeah every single day and like those would always get like a couple thousand couple hundred okay. and then I think by the end of it all I had like a couple thousand followers on Twitter from 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 the celibacy journal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that was that was that was you know act one that was, yeah. that, was, that was season one yeah um and then, but but now you you have like close to three hundred k, right? Like, what was the next? What was the next arc? And oh by the way, that, that whole celibacy right uh, ch- chapter, what ended it? What broke? What broke this? Uh, yes, with yeah. the ah uh, with the guy with the, it ended up being the guy that asked me out mm. on that date. And it was like the worst. Sex. It, you, it was actually like damn yeah, one of the worst sex I've ever had. Should have took it back. I really w- I really wish I could have. I actually kind of wish I kept my celibacy era going longer. Yeah, yeah. I think I could have. You, you, we could have more tweets detect, out of that. You didn't, you didn't detect just, you know, bad sexual. Uh, you ever look at a guy or, or you, you know, you ever just start talking to a guy and you see his mannerisms and like, oh, you would be bad. You know. Oh, uh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't uh, f- me properly. You know, Ooh, I uh, have this problem. I think I've, have I told you this? I think I have this problem where I actually tend to fall for guys that have the exact mannerisms that would suggest he's bad at sex. Ah. Because so right like so I really like dorky right. guys. I right. like nerdy guys. Right. I like like wholesome guys. Mm. Right? Like I got, I like guys that like are really So you nervous. know this is gonna be bad. But you <laughs> still I, you know <laughs> But right once I fall for a guy then I wanna have sex with him. Right, fair. And then it's fair. like like so it's it's actually crazy. So often I like find out like the guy is literally a virgin. Mm. Cause that's the kind of guy that I fell for. It's like super innocent, super sweet, like yeah, nervous, yeah. clumsy. Like I just am attracted to like those mm. kind of qualities. Okay. But yeah, I see, I see, I see. good sex is tends to not tends to, to not to, be to, there. to not fall under 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 no. the, the the homies like that. Yeah, which is okay. It was never like that important to me. Sure, 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 sure. Does that make sense? Like I think, like I think, like if you like someone, then mm. it's like even mediocre becomes like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Gra- gradually, it, it starts. It starts yeah. getting better because you know, once in a yeah. once once upon a time, I, yeah. I was I was that clumsy little yeah. little version. Yeah, yeah. But it, that guy specifically not worth it mm. because take that one back. Well, first of all, he came in like five seconds, and stay at home and off. Oh, I really, sh- I really should have. And both you and him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what was really shitty was i later found out that uh-huh. when we hooked up and yeah. we're seeing each other and all this stuff he had a girlfriend the whole time damn yep uh but you know he did kick he, he did kickstart my little twitter journey there okay i mean i think it would have uh, kicked I, I think it would have kickstart like regardless because right. i think like i'm just my personality is just unhinged mm. and i'm very open and i'm funny and i think what like sooner or later there would have been a tweet that blew up and right. i actually think it's interesting i actually think the timing wasn't even that tweet because even before that tweet, I had tweets similar to that. I'm just like talking my shit. Uh-huh. But I think what actually made that tweet go viral was I used to have like an anonymous like profile picture on Twitter. Uh-huh. Like I just didn't have a picture. I was just yeah. like, I don't care. Sure. And then I uploaded a picture of myself uh-huh. and then that tweet went viral. Okay. And so I think it was like specifically what I was saying and then people also seeing like who was saying it, right? Right. Like, and like seeing my face also it's like just another layer of surprise like yeah. i think when people see me or like how i talk they just don't expect people put a face to, yeah, to, to they, the they tweet just, now but yeah but they don't expect the words i say to be coming out of like a petite asian chick yeah 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 so i think it's just like that surprise factor always gets people but i think it's a lot of fun for me because i like i mean i love chaos yeah so i love doing what's just like not expected and like being rebellious so what what, what was the next uh what was the next arc I mean, I think I had, so while I was in college, I talked a lot about my relationships. Like Mm. I remember I had tweets, I had one go really viral that ended up actually in like a bunch of like news publications, like, like Buzzfeed, like Vice kind of news. Um, But it was because I did this thing where like on Instagram, you know how when you like, you can archive old photos, right? So it disappears from your main page. And so I used to have photos of shitty exes that I had that I had archived so it wasn't okay. on my profile uh-huh. anymore and one day I was like going through my archive and I was just like I look good in these photos right. and I want them on my profile and I don't like I don't want to like like this guy's a shit person now but he shouldn't stop me from like feeling like I can't have this picture or like own this picture anymore yeah. right like ha- like feel like I have ownership over it so what I did was I unarchived all those photos and then I just edited the captions right so like like if the original caption was like oh like I 
drove like seven hours to Boston to see this guy or like, yeah, just to hang out or something like that. At the edit would be like, not worth the trip. Like just something super like quick, like snarky, whatever. It's just like, hey, this shit didn't work out and people should know, but I'm gonna put this photo back in. Mm. But I did it with like a number of my exes. And then I screenshotted all those photos and I made a tweet about it. I was like, yep, I decided to unarchive these old photos, but I edited the captions to be more accurate. Uh, and that kind of blew up because I think a lot of women uh, and men too resonated with just like having shitty exes and like feeling like, oh, you can like gain control over that narrative again, right? Like over mm. your story and like, right? Like, yeah, like relationships aren't all pretty and rainbows and sunshine and like feeling like you get to edit that and like make an right. amendment to those relationships. So, so when you, when you re arc or, or when you reposted them, did you get any of these exes hit you back up? Like, yo, what's, yo, what's up with these captions? Yo, 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 oh you, you think God. you could air me out like that? Hold on. I, well, I, I thought, wait, dude, I still I still love you. What, what? I, oh, I don't know. Listen, I don't know if you want to go into this story with me. Oh, no, let's go into it. Let's go into it. Let's let's dive deep. I got my school gear. I'm I'm ready. All right. So this this Boston guy, right? Boston. That All right. that yeah, so that was the original caption was literally yeah, like took a 7-hour bus to to see him. Um, I really liked him and I actually took this bus ride to go see him for the first time. So we had been talking online for a while wow. and we really liked each other, right? We were flirting a lot, all this stuff. And he ended up inviting me to his formal oh. at MIT. Fun. Um, oh, yeah. MIT, man. Oh. Yeah, I know. And I, yeah, that's the kind of that's my yeah, 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 yeah. And so I, 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 I'm, it's like finals week and I'm like studying on my bus ride. Like that's how much I like this guy, right? Like to go to Boston sure, from sure. Philadelphia. Um, and I think I've mentioned this on some of the podcasts before, but uh -huh. I've been assaulted before in the past. Mm. So that was something I made really clear to this guy, right? Mm. I was like, I know we're meeting for the first time. I know we're- Oh, this is the first time you meet? Oh, yeah, oh, okay, I was like, okay. I know we're staying with each other for the weekend, yeah, but I yeah. want to make it really clear that Yo, don't like- Don't touch me until oh, yeah, I touch I was, you. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. I was just like, I don't want anything to happen without consent. Cause yeah. like it's happened to me before. It was yeah. really shitty and like, yeah, and I just want to like, you know, get it all out there right. make sure we're on the same page. And he's like, of course, we're on the same page. Like nothing happens without consent. Like, it, yeah, cause, right. Cause I'm like, I like, I like, I know we've been flirting. We've been sexting even, right? Yeah, but yeah. that doesn't mean I want you to inside of me right. like, as, as soon as we're there. Just apply my AM moisturizer, my SPF 20 before I go out to the streets of Bangkok. And thank you to T. Chanley for sponsoring this week's video because right here I'm using the AM facial moisturizer SPF 20. It can protect me from this harsh Thailand sun. This can not only protect my skin, but also give my skin a nice little glow. Especially if I'm out here meeting new girls, I, I wanna put the best foot forward. If they're looking at me, I wanna make sure this is presentable. I'm traveling now. A lot of times I'm using the AM moisturizer. Sometimes I'll use a two times per week facial exfoliating scrub. We have eye cream to get rid of the, the dark circles under your eyes. I think every guy needs a skincare routine to be able to increase their confidence. You know, how do you guys think I bring my best self to the table? All thanks to T. Chanley. And because they're sponsored in this week's video, they're offering you a great deal. Just click on the first link in the description box to get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. So don't miss out on this amazing deal. And now let's get back to the video. Damn, you you, um, you, you made it. You made it like yeah, uh, abundantly am, clear, like, no, like that. I am a very very communicative person. I mean, uh -huh. you know this. Like yeah. if I like a person, they know exactly like like how much I like them, but, like but, that I want to see them. And if I don't, then you know it too. Like mm -hmm. I don't play around with feelings. Like I over communicate. Yeah. Um, cause I don't want to waste my time. So yeah, we were on, so he's like, we're on the same page. I go to Boston, we see each other, we hang out for a little bit. And then immediately his hands are all over me, like oh. all over. Like it, it was actually really, no, it was actually really disgusting. Like we're in the movie room. Yeah. We're in the movie room trying to watch a movie. We're trying to watch like Avengers. Like that's, that's <laughs> not the kind of movie you try to to. No, it's not in game. Not. No, you, it was, you yeah, it was the oh. last one. No, 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 not end game. It was oh. the. Even better, it was the first Avengers. The first, of, the the first but, Infinity War was better than Endgame. No, and, and he's like, he's no. like touch. He's like trying to take my clothes off. He's like trying to f me in this like public movie <gasps> room. And I was like, there's, I, I literally got to the point where I left the room, and I was like, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was like, you know, like relax. Right. right. And so I thought that was that, you know. Yeah. But that wasn't that because that Ooh. night we he were gonna like, oh, he did he did okay and that okay. night we were gonna share a bed together right um and it's like right You're already like, getting red flags though right like right but you know you know dorm rooms right uh -huh. so it was like a dorm room 
like he shared a dorm with another person. So it was like one of those dorm rooms with two beds next to each other. So his roommate slept on one bed and then we slept on one bed mm -hmm. next to his roommate. So I come in thinking, I'm like, nothing's going to happen in this fucking scenario. Bro, you got a whole nother man right there. Yeah. And you know what happened? Y'all had sex. Uh, he, he did the, oh, 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 you just feel a hand start going. So I'm sleeping. Damn. I'm sleeping. And I start feeling. Damn. And right. I'm like half asleep. I'm like not really sure what's going on. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've ever like been asleep and maybe a partner is whatever uh -huh. touching you. But but it was like that until until basically I just woke up. I'm like wide awake now because there's a inside of me. And I'm just like, oh, oh like oh. he's fucking me like right here in this bed next to his fucking roommate. Without like. No, without asking. Without like, hey, hey. Without, no, there was no asking. There was no consent. There was he, like this guy didn't even put on my fucking condom. It was, it was actually really fucked up. It was actually really fucked up. It's actually, I mean, that's the definition of right? Like, yeah. putting your in somebody without yeah. consent. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm in this bed with this guy that I really liked and I really trusted, and he wrote to me. Uh, so, that was basically my Boston trip. So, I, I actually, I ended up just, I, I was like, stop, and I got out of bed, and I left that room. Oh, shit. Um, or he left the room and, like, slept somewhere else. And, like, we kind of... <laughs> what yeah, he just, It's just a whole... It was Because it was the middle of the night. And, like, right. I'm in the city. I don't know anybody. Like, uh, I don't okay. know where to go. Okay, okay, okay. Like, it's, like, yeah. 4 a.m. in the right, middle of the night. Right. And so, yeah. So he's like, you you just sleep on my bed. I'll dip. So, I don't okay. I don't think anything was said. It was just, like, oh, stop. And oh, he shit. just realized he f***ed up. And Ooh. he left okay, the room. Okay, okay. And we talked about it the next morning. I was like... I was like, dude, we talked about this. Yeah. I was like what you did to me was really fucked up, right? Yeah. I like, we talked about it in person. He started crying. He was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know what got over me. Like, I just, like, in my head, I thought you were really into it because you were kissing me back, like, blah, blah, mm. blah. And I'm just like, I literally told you I don't want to do shit until mm. we, like, said it. And I'm like, are you fucking... But I don't know. At the time, I was really, I don't know. I'm a really, like, empathetic Not, and forgiving uh -huh. person. So I was like, listen, like, if you genuinely thought you had consent or whatever it was mm -hmm. and you fucked up and you made a mistake like don't do it again yeah and like i can forgive you right i see so is this i just want to clarify is this different from like you guys were making out in bed and then he put it in no i'm sleeping okay that's that's weird i'm sleeping that's yeah weird. like it's like i we went to bed at like 12 a.m yeah and this is like three hours later now like he woke up uh, in the middle of the night was horny and then started kissing me and like yeah i that's, guess i guess you know like when you're like in a daze and like yeah someone's like kissing you're like you're probably i'm probably kissing him back it's not like i'm pushing him and like uh -huh. i'm fine with kissing right but then it just got to a point where it was like okay like full on sex now that i didn't ask for yeah um so it was really up we had a whole conversation about it and even when i left boston like on the fucking long ass bus ride yeah. back i texted him too i was like hey like yeah this like I mean, I could show you the screenshot. It was like a long ass thing of like yeah. all the things he did to me. I was like, you touching me in the movie room, like fucking me without my consent, without a condom. Like that was all really fucked up. Yeah. And I hope you never do this to another woman. Mm. And like, I can like forgive you for mm. this like one time. Like, like we can put it behind mm. us. I'm, I'm not trying to ruin your life or anything mm. like that. But like, are we like, are we on the same fucking same page now yeah. that like, this is not okay. So we had a whole conversation about that. That was like, I don't know, like 20... I think that was also, when did this happen? This happened my junior year. So that was like early 2019, like spring 2019. And then when I did this whole archi like unarchiving of X photos, that was like. Hold on. <laughs> I just want to say I didn't. Should have gave you a title, like a, like a headline before you jumped into this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to guide. <laughs> I'm sorry. I told you it was going to be a lot to unpack. But anyways. <laughs> so, yeah. So, now we jump forward like a year later. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like, like I forgave him. But, yeah. I'm going to do my little cheeky caption for my little, like, it was a photo of the formal. And, honestly, I was like, I'm being very generous here. Because all I said, all I put was not edit, not worth the trip. That's all I said in this fucking caption. Not worth the trip. And yes, it caused a lot of a lot of drama because this guy was huh. in this like frat and all hits his like frat bro his saw. Boy, and you yeah, know, yeah. How, and like they don't have the context. They don't know what the fuck happened. Right. So then it became this whole narrative of like, oh my God, like his petty ex is like spread, like talking shit on nah. Twitter, blah, blah, blah. And then he had a girlfriend at this time too. 
and oh, she his girl found, found she out. made a post. She made something like Instagram post about me. Like being like, oh, these petty bitches are so jealous of me that they need to like <laughs> get back at my ex, blah, 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 makeup stories. And like, it was like a whole, dr- like, and like to the point where like people were texting me and they're like, oh my God, like all these people at MIT are like freaking out about your post. Like you need to leave, you need to leave alone. Like he didn't do anything. Like, cause they don't, no one knows context except wow. me and like I had wait, kept- wait, wait, hold on. Are you sure you want to air out his name? I don't know. We can bleep it out. Okay, we can okay. Bleep it out. Let's bleep out the let's name. Ca- let's come out. Let's yeah. say, okay. Fake name to be clear. Jacob. So, yeah, they're all like, like, yeah, like Jacob is super ex- upset. Like he's not going, he's going through a rough time and you're being mm. such a bitch about it. Like mm. you're hurting his feelings and you're hurting his girlfriend's feelings. Like, like they're every, yeah. Like these people were texting me being like, relax, like yeah. be nice to Jacob. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like, I'm like mad. I'm like fuming mad because they don't he, know. They don't know the full story. Well, and I don't care that they don't know, but he knew. He knew exactly what happened and he's like playing victim in this whole thing, right? Like he's letting, uh, yeah, he's he's being all like, oh yeah, I'm sad and she's being mean to me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, you're fucking kidding me, dude. You're actually fucking kidding me. So, so yeah, there was, this, there was all this drama and I, I was, I was, yeah, I was like sitting there fuming mad because I was like, I have screenshots. Oh, you I have, I for, have, for I was like, I have the text messages where I sent you exactly what you did to me oh. and you replied to it. I'm so sorry. Oh. I will never do that again. You, you, you screenshot it. I do. Oh, I have those screenshots, this is why Jimmy. you don't do text things. No, no, that's why you do do text things because if somebody raped you, you want well, well, that. Right, wait, right, you right, want right, that right, on text. Right, 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 right. For the receipts, of course. Mm. No, it was good. It was good that I, I like extra again. I over communicate. Communicate. Yeah. I extra clarify everything. Like I have all these conversations, right? So yeah, I go back through her messages and I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. I screenshot it. And you know what? I, yeah. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, do I tweet it? Because right oh, now shit. at this point, you I had have like all the ammunition. I had like thirteen thousand followers on Twitter. This yeah. guy has a cushy job at Microsoft. Like again, I left his life alone. I was sure. like, you know, oh. you said sorry. I hope you know your mistake. You never do this shit against women. Like. You know, right. it sucks for me, but you have a nice life. Like, right. I don't know. I'm, kinda, I'm that kind of person. Uh, yeah, until now, he's like acting all victim because of a snarky fucking caption. Right. And so I was like, do I tweet this and cost him his job? Because I know people are Microsoft. I can send them this, this stuff. <gasps> or yeah, like, or like just like, like all of his friends will turn on him as soon as they know that he's a rapist, yeah, right? Like yeah, all yeah. these little, like get him kicked out of his frat, get him Title Nine. Like yeah. I can't do all this stuff if I wanted to, yeah. because again, you fucking put your dick in me while I was sleeping. Oh. That's, not, that's not what you do. But instead, I did a 10 minute meditation. I, went, I, went out, I took a walk. This is what I do when I'm angry. I take a walk, I meditate. And after the 10 minutes, I'm like, let me try to give him one more chance. Oh, okay. forgiveness. Because okay. I don't know, I, this, and this might be such a crazy take from me, but I genuinely do believe in like redemption. Mm. Like, I don't know, like you watch Avatar The Last Airbender and you're like, oh, Iroh's such a great guy, but you like Iroh committed war crimes and like killed people and like yeah. like destroyed cities because he, right, like he thought he was doing the right thing and then he learned and then he became a better person. And I think a lot of people make mistakes and I think some of them are really, really fucked up, yeah. right? But at least in this context, and because it happened to me, sure, I was sure. like, I think it is something that I can forgive and like I believe he still can be a better person. Uh-huh. So okay, so you didn't do violence. You so I didn't. didn't. At, well, not huh? not mid halfway, not full. Like yeah, like the full way would be like ruining his life forever, right? Like well, Brock, Tur- right? Like what happened to Brock Turner? Like I could have done to him, where like he could never be in public spaces again. Right. You, you and just I was put, like, you put a face. Yeah, to and the, I was really like, I don't. Text. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that to a person, mm, even if he hurt me. Fair, fair, I fair, just, fair, fair. I don't know. I want to give him a second chance. Okay. Um, and so what I did was I, was I screenshotted those messages Sent to his and girlfriend at the I time. put him and his girlfriend in a little group message <gasps> and I sent it to both of them. So, right. So Jacob and Jacob's girlfriend in a little Facebook messenger chat. And I was like, Hey guys, I've been hearing all these rumors, nasty rumors about me because I made this little caption about you and no one knows, like no one in the past has no, knew exactly what happened when I was in Boston, but Jacob, you and I know what happened in, in Boston. And I had every right to say, edit, not worth the trip. Like I'm actually being really nice. I'm yeah, actually being yeah, really nice yeah, with, yeah. with this yeah, caption yeah. here. Cause this is what you did to me. And then I put the screenshot there, like, and then it's like, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Right. And I'm like, yeah. So what I want is a public apology from both of you, because mm. you guys are coming out here, like pretending to be the victim when I'm the one 
that you really deeply hurt, right. and we both know this. And like, I want a public apology, or else, yeah, I'm just gonna put it on my Twitter then, and people can make their decisions how they want. Mm. Uh, and yeah, so so I asked one from him, and I asked one from his girlfriend too, because she also was coming up here talking. And yeah, like if you're gonna date a rapist, then apologize for it. Honestly, so apparently, yeah, like they got in a huge fight and it was a whole thing, but I got my public apologies and I never, yeah, and I didn't put him on blast and I moved on with my life. So that, (laughs) that was the drama from that. Um, The other exes, I mean, they, yeah, I don't know if they talk shit, but it didn't come back to me and I had, you know, I like wanted to leave that behind too. Like, listen, I just wanted to make a cheeky little fucking Twitter like post right, right, right. and you couldn't leave me be so that's that story but that went real, really viral and i got a lot of instagram <laughs> followers from it and I, yeah and i got i think i got from like a couple thousand to like past 10k on twitter with it but like basically i was just doing all these like kind of like really openness about my relationships right yeah. like all the, the rawness of it like the like the the sex that was bad the sex that didn't work out or like right like the the relationships that didn't work out yeah. um and like sometimes empowering for people to like know that they can talk about their own experiences too or like right. that it's okay um holy shit yeah that, so that I, was a trip that was a fucking trip that we just went on you spilled all the tea every single Ulan, green, I did. every single tea. I didn't. <sighs> yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. Well, I, I I'm sorry that happened to you. First of all, um, thank you, guys. You know, yeah. Even you, you, uh, everywhere from from any any walks of life, you you think just because they're they're smart, it don't necessarily mean they understand uh, social body cues. You know, you know what I'm saying. Some something I actually find is that it. I actually think sometimes it's worse at like a good college like Penn or MIT because mm. I actually think what happens is well these guys get into Ivy League and good schools and they think they're smart and they have an ego about it mm. and then they get into like a frat of like 50 guys that are all egging them on and like giving them positive reinforcement like yeah dude like you got like yeah bang that chick like yeah. bang this chick and then so in their head they literally they're like well I'm smart and I know what I'm doing and I'm a good person so what I'm doing can't be wrong. Right. Like that's what yeah, the they whole get life. such a God complex about it, right? Right, 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 right. But that's why like rape and sexual assault is so bad at college campuses. Like it's so bad at schools like Penn or I, Stanford. I, I, mean, I mean, yeah, but like I mean all colleges throughout the sure, nations sure, sure, like sure. a lot of Ivies too, and they just sweep it on the rug because mm. they're like, Well, this is our boy wonder. He like was an all A mm. student, he's like a decathlon, blah blah blah. Like yeah. why he can't be a rapist, and it's like no, like Anybody can be a rapist. Like, yeah. I think people have such a misconception about rape where they think only like monsters can be rapists, right? Like, oh, only someone who's evil and like attacks you in the back alley. Like, that's really right, like right. rape. And it's like, no, sometimes it's just like a guy who's horny and doesn't know what consent is or doesn't know how to ask for consent. Yeah. And he just thinks women are into him and he's so used to getting what he wants yeah. that he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. But a lot of guys at Ivy Leagues are like that. A lot of guys in fraternities are like that. Like, I don't know if you know the stat, uh, but guys in frats are 300% more likely to rape and assault women than not. And it's because of that. It's the same culture of it's like, that nature. Yeah, uh, yeah, of like, oh shit, like, who are you fucking today? Like, oh yeah, she was so into you. Like, you should totally go for her. You should totally mm. get like all of this kind of like bro like locker room, like behavior, but around, yeah, like sex yeah yeah i i i you know th- that's the thing it's like g- guys congratulate other guys for just just hitting yo you hit bro yo yo you, you hit that right yeah i hit yeah. and then that's the end of the story yeah. what about yo you held her hand yo yo you you guys went on a nice little date uh-huh. yeah. right yeah yeah yo, yo wh- wh- why can't we celebrate the little things yeah. that, that that lead up like why is it always about hitting yeah what if we you know i just want to just I, I had a good time with, with, with a girl and, and we did a, a, a cute date why, why can't we just celebrate the little wins right right <laughs> right but but, but yeah the, the bros don't want to hear that nope. yeah because yeah. whatever like romance being romantic or whatever is like lame to people and it's i don't know but I, that's it's partly why i feel so strongly about like talking about sex mm. right like and like making these sex jokes that i do because one i really want to empower like 
women and like Asian women too. Right. Like, cause we don't come from families that like teach us about sex or teach us how to talk about sex or like let us know that it's even okay to have sex. Right. So like letting women know that it's okay to talk about this stuff and like be horny and like know what you want. And like, if you want sex, you can say that. Like, like I hate these. Yeah, like when we don't talk, I think that's when you have problems, right? I hate these games of like, oh, women want sex, but they can't ask for it because then they'll be like a whore. So mm -hmm. then guys just have to like make the move. Guys just have to assume and make the move. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the culture that we have. Yeah. Right? Of like yeah. these games of like chasing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes the girl doesn't want it. Right. And if you assume she does, now you're hurting people. I, yeah, I think I, I, I saw on the... The podcast a couple podcasts ago where we kind of talked about how sometimes you know I, I i told the podcast like yo i just sometimes take charge i take lead and and you know i just do the touching right i don't explicitly go like in the moment i don't explicitly go like oh hey can i you cool if i if i just put my arms around you you cool if i just caress you i don't i don't break it down um and I I could see where the problem lies now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and although I still do think sometimes there there is a mood <clears throat> that you could kill with just yo. Uh, is it cool if I, I caress your leg? Yeah. You know what I mean? No, like no, I get you. Like yeah. I think I think there's a balance, yeah. right? Like yeah, like not like. I think one, what's really important is to like really have trust and a foundation yeah. between partners. And I think when you have talked about that stuff, like, again, it's like with partners that you kind of already know you've been with, like, yeah. you know what they want, or you've like talked about it in some way before, like maybe not in that moment, but you might've talked about it in the past. Now, now, now okay. So, right? so this is something I'm, I'm thinking back to. Like, there have been times on dates where I extend the invite for her to come to me. Right. So maybe like, um, like, hey, let, let's walk down the street. I'll hold my hand out. Or if, Aww. like, I want to cuddle, I just, I, I tap this. I tap Aww. my lap. <laughs> and, and she comes. Mm -hmm. Right? I feel like that's the, the, the better way to go about it rather yeah. than just doing it. Have her come yeah. to you. Yeah. Like, some type of gesture. Because yeah. she could refuse. Yeah. Do you think th that's ever, like, peer, like pressure, though, for, for me to, like... Tap my, my no, and then, like right see it like i think that in a way that's like asking that's like an invitation right, right. like it, to me it's the same thing like do you want to sit on my lap versus right like asking doesn't have to be verbal right. i think i prefer it verbal again because of what i've been through uh, that i just want it to be over communicated fair, fair, fair. but like i don't know i'm thinking like with my boyfriend mm -hmm. right like the first time i mean i was over at his place and he just kind of did one of those like you know arm on your yeah, shoulder now yeah. and like i think that's a pretty okay thing like and you can you can kind of think about it too like what's the worst that happens if she didn't want my arm around her shoulder right yeah. like yeah i can move and it's like not the worst thing for a guy to touch my shoulder and yeah. i didn't want it yeah, versus yeah. like if you were to grab my ass without <laughs> like that would be a lot right? right like i think that's something you should not do. get there first but. instead of immediately or like or like I've, I've been on so many dates where guys just like grab me and kiss me and that's been gross Okay, like, so like we're like sitting next to like each grab your face or like grab like your waist and like the... like, like I just so many like movie dates. This is why I hate movie dates too. You be going on movie dates? Yeah. For first dates? Why? You you doing it wrong. Well hey, that's those were the dates I've been asked on and I was like, okay, but we're yeah, we're sitting there and they just start like yeah, they just grab my face and like oh. and I'm just like, ew the fuck? But yeah, like I think I think I like kissing is something that I like to be asked to like, can I kiss you? I think it's one of the sexiest mm -hmm. things right. ever. Or like you really wait, like you really like there's eye contact yeah. and there's like sexual tension and you're like getting there. Maybe she's smiling. You slowly lean in, right? Like again, I didn't say like slow lean, see if she does it back. But it's never just like, mm, like. <laughs> Mm, like, have a nice no. face because <laughs> then I can't because then you can't because yeah, then they can't even say no if they wanted to or they can't even pause and think about it like you actually didn't give them any room yeah. to like say no so I think that's yeah that's really important is making that space but whatever way you make that space if it's like letting them come to you you know it's so it's so funny I, I feel like so so many guys go on dates and they're just 
they they might you also gotta understand like sometimes for for guys it, it might be like super nerve wracking mm. and they might not even know what to do yeah like maybe I uh, uh, oh fuck you know they're so nervous like I should make a move I should make a move do <laughs> up <laughs> okay no fuck I fucked up yeah I think I think it's tough listen you, I think you think it's that you think it's ever like of course of course I mean uh-huh. I'm telling you I <laughs> I I've t- I've I think I've said this on a podcast maybe not this one but I'm like. I'm a very, very empathetic person. I always try to put myself in someone's their, shoes, their shoes and give them like the best, the most benefit of the doubt, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, imagine the most awkward person. Imagine like, yeah, like all their friends make fun of them for how they can't like be with women or like, right? Like, no oh, game. did you have no game? Yeah, like yeah. if you can't kiss her or like if you can't like have sex with her, like you fucked up, dude. Like no one wants you. Like if that's all that's in your brain and you're so like, okay, I have to, I have to do it. I have mm-hmm. to kiss her. I have to like, and yeah and then like that's that, then that's what you're gonna end up doing yeah, yeah and i don't again i don't think like they're evil for it i think it's just like as a society we're not teaching men or like and women too the right tools to communicate and like and, like empowering them in, in the right ways where it's like yeah. yeah like just go on a date be comfortable right like that should be like maybe that should be the goals that we're setting for people right like yeah. i think so many people feel like the goal the end goal of the date has to be like oh did you hit did you have sex? And then I, mean, I, I think now that I think about it, sometimes for girls too. Like, like how, how do the girls, uh, you know, how, how do you go back to your girls and and, 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 and you know, in the group chats and 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 the group is like, oh, what happened with with what happened with John? What happened with you know Jason? What happened with so and so? Right? The girls also be like, ah, oh. right. how, how do See, the girls? Ask? I think well, I, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's like how to go, but I think a lot of the times like. When I think about the best dates I've been on, it's like I will come back to my girl super excited. I'm like, dude, we got along so well. Like we talked all night. Like we talked for hours. Like the mm. conversations were so good. He's like, he walked me home. He's like really? so sweet. He like paid for dinner. Like oh yeah, and we like went on this. Like we like took a walk around the park, and it was so fucking cute. And, and he the like girl, held he's my like, hand. Oh my god, that's so cute. Yeah, but it's like, and sometimes I mean, I mean, you know me, I fuck on the first date uh-huh. a lot of times, and so a lot of times it's also like we had sex but it's never like i never talk about it as like an achievement or like a trophy right it's never like yeah like bagged him yeah, or like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if anything it's always, i'm always like fuck like <laughs> at sex again <laughs> but it was because the day was so good mm. it was because i liked him so much and we got along so well and we vibed so well and that like right like and it was so nice i mean I you know this right I like see, I see, I see. but like um I mean, you were you're there because you're like you're basically like my girl, you know. Well, hold on, no, 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 no. I'm just, I will fuck you right now. Get the fuck out of here. I ain't your girl. Okay, well, you're one of the people who I text about my love life, right? Oh no, like, you, when you, I... you you must you must <laughs> disregard my Come my on, entire dude. manhood. Come, okay, sorry. Right. You're my boy. You're my boy. I'm one of you. I'm one of your boys. You hit. <laughs> you hit last night. But well, I'm trying to remember our conversations. But it's like, uh-huh. sorry. Um, but the first time that I saw John, mm. and like afterwards, I told you about it, right? And I was like, I was like, I was like, damn it, guys, I didn't make it to the first day. Oh <laughs> right, 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 right. And I, oh, I said something like, oh, I thought your body was a temple. <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you were doing celibacy again. I what was, happened? I was. I was doing celibacy, then I fell in love with John, okay? But I was <laughs> I was so committed. Yeah. So for context, I, I had told I promised Jimmy. I was like, Jimmy, I'm not gonna fr- I'm not gonna fuck him on the first date. I'm not gonna fuck him on the first date. I'm not gonna do it. I'm a different person now. Yeah. And then I fucked John before we even went on our first date. Oh my god. <laughs> that wasn't even a first date. That was a that was just a trial. But to my point, I feel like a lot a really of guys I feel like a lot of guys they uh they they protect they like to be like an overprotective brother mm-hmm. with their their girlfriends. So it's like for you, right? If you come back and like, oh my god, I had such a fucking shitty, shitty mm-hmm. date. The guy's not even treating me well. I still hit. I mean, well, I we we had sex. We we'd be mad at you almost. Right, 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 right. Because right. you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like if we see the guy, or if we see guys hitting on you at the at the club at the bar, we're like, hey, hold on, yo, yo, who is you? Exactly, exactly. That's such a good analogy. Like, I wish more guys thought about the ways they treat women with like 
Like, if you were her brother and you saw some random guy doing yeah. this to her, would you be like, whoa, 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 do you know her? Does yeah. she like you? Does yeah. she say she like you already? Right, right, right. Does she want this right now? Right? And But but when they're in the, the position themselves, they're just kind of, it's just so one track mind. Like, I don't think they pause to think about how the woman is feeling. It's just mm. like, it's just like, I gotta hit, I gotta hit, I gotta hit, I gotta hit, I gotta hit. Yeah. And that's the only thing to get it. Yeah. Um, but I think it results in a lot of uncomfortable situations, which, which is why, again, I'm so, I mean, I talk about this so yeah. much, but I'm like, just ask. Not like, I think, ass. listen, like, it's not the end of the world to not hit it's really not i think so i know i know like we have like a lonely crisis and like so yeah. many people are touch starved and so many people like are lonely and sad like i get that that sucks mm -hmm. but i promise you like that's a better world to live in than right. to like potentially be a rapist or assault someone yeah. and like have to live with that for the rest of your life like it's fine to not hit it's, it's so really fine not to not and like honestly if you're yeah if you're doing everything else right like you're probably gonna hit like 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 down the road down the road yeah, yeah it's 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 an early investment in bitcoin right it, it might not <laughs> kick in right away but then you, you know what i'm saying all right yeah. you give it a year but, well, I'm <laughs> no, no, that's, i'm that's curious jimmy can i like when did you when did you lose your virginity so see see i, I waited I, I waited a while uh -huh. see I, I i took i took the not hitting and, and i ran with it for 21 <laughs> years yeah, right? and that's so fine. See, okay, well, um, I think if if I learn how to, like, wait, if I learned the proper etiquettes to hit, yeah, right, earlier on, I felt like I might have gotten a good like, a, a extra like four good fucking years. I felt like those four were like they were really good masturbation years, <laughs> right? Like I. I, I <laughs> Like, I had great, like, uh, uh, four years where I was just on the deep ends of the hub, and I was just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you. Oh, I love a good master. I'm in, I feel like I was, like, yeah, I was really ready. Like, again, celibacy era is masturbation era for me. Oh. I like it. Oh, you're I still, so you, you're still nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not having Although, sex. Right. Yeah, you're yeah, flicking yeah. it all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah. I'm like learning my body. I'm like, mm. oh, this is how I like it. Like, this is the porn that I like. These are uh. the situations I like. Oh, like, wait, wait, wait. You on the, are you on the hub? Are you on no. Brazzers? No, I read. Oh, right, 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 right. I'm a, the, I'm a the, 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 the manga stuff. Yeah, I like to read and write. That's why I'm a tweeter. Mm. <laughs> so so do, do do you go on, uh, is it is it Faku where, where you see the manga? No. No? You just, is it just words? No, well, it's not. It's like, Kore it's like the Korean comics. Right? It's like webtoons. Okay. Right, right, right. But Faku, that, 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 Faku was was uh, uh, was a. Uh, uh, I've never been on that. But it would be like manga porn. You you tap okay. the page and it right t -t 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 right comes right. up like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's similar. It's like the same thing. It's just this is Korean instead of Japanese. Yeah, but um, yeah, like all those masturbations. Yeah, that's what. That's why I know about Faku. That's why I know about you know, Brazzers, yeah. uh, X Hamster, Red Tube, yeah. U Porn. No, you know. Yeah, but I'm saying like you don't. I don't actually think you missed out on anything. Uh, like no, no, no. I think I did a little bit. I think I think though, like like between 16, 17 when people started having sex to so 21 the kids are having a lot of sex but what would you have gained in your life from having that much more sex mm. like what do you think you like like what you think you'd be a bigger youtuber now you think you'd be a happier person now if you had sex or like i actually don't think it makes any difference like when it happens as like it's like really being ready so i right i lost my virginity at 18 to yeah. like my ex that i really loved and mm. it was like um it was a really oh, good no, no, first time i think flex on me now all right but but I don't yeah I don't I was like I'm really glad I didn't have sex before that because mm. I would have been way too young I would have had probably more bad sexual experiences I think mm. I, or like right like if I could have, if I never had sex from eighteen to twenty one um yeah then maybe, maybe I those never, were the like the bad sex years they were <laughs> uh. <laughs> then, but but I mean I I keep I don't know I keep them because. Or like I would do it again because I think it taught me a lot about myself and yeah. like how to have better sex now. Yeah. But I also don't think if you like if you raised it, I wouldn't have missed out. Or like I don't know, I've been with guys, like I was with a guy recently who's like a twenty-seven year old virgin. Oh. And like. How was that? Terrible. Oh, Awful. Shit. Just wanna yeah, Damn. not great. I made a tweet about it. Oh. <laughs> of course you did. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that one was kind of crazy and then he saw the tweet and texted me about it 
was, <laughs> I mean, naturally, it'd be. No, but it was okay. It but, it was, up. but it wasn't even like, again. You, were you like, man, like 20 year, 27 no, years old? No, no. I'm not one to shame people. And that's why I think there's nothing to be shamed of if you're a virgin either. Like, What's the tweet? I, we talked about this on it, but it was, um, it was the one where it's like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you need to ask people before being aggressive with them during sex. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah, like kings, same issues. Same kings issues. need consent too because what happened with this guy he's and it's crazy. Out of porn. Yeah, yeah, because mm. I think right, he's never fucked before, and instead of just talking about it and asking me what I liked, he just started doing shit. He started <sighs> slapping me. He started spitting on me. I'm like, what the fuck is happening okay. here i'm like this is my first time hanging out with you okay. why are you treating me this okay way? okay it was yeah. really yeah so i made it it was not a good but it was like not shaming i didn't sure, shame him sure. i wasn't like it was a teaching moment yeah i wasn't yeah. i wasn't it wasn't even almost about him it wasn't even like oh this 27 year old virgin didn't know how to fuck blah 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 right, but right. it was more like general like psa hey if you're with someone yeah. like ask them before you start treating them roughly and then, yeah, and then he sent me a really weird text that I was not a fan of. And did I did he not a paragraph? Yeah, it was a oh, whole paragraph, but no. it was like, no, no, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And and to be fair, I like kind of talked to him about it, too. I was kind of like, hey, you should probably like ask next time before you right. do this stuff. Like, again, I, I communicate and I'm like really nice about this stuff. But he just sent me this text that was like, oh, I just wanted to thank you again for like, you know. Um, Taking my virginity, teaching like, me the ropes. Yeah, I'm like, you were like, I just spent a good time with you and blah, blah, blah. And oh, like, it was a nice hope you have a good text. No, I, but, it, but it was weird because I know he sent that because he saw my tweet. Uh, so if you see your tweet where you're kind of like, oh, that was a really bad experience for uh, her. Yeah. And I made her like feel this way about it. Uh -huh. Like, Right, like, apologize. Yeah, yeah, like, why would you go that? Like, would you hit him an ex and just be like, Oh, yeah, I had such a good time with you? Okay, like, okay, it's a difference with a virgin, though. With a virgin, he that man is thankful at 27. He's like, Oh, she dragged me from yeah, the sure, from the depths, sure, right? sure, like, sure, you can, but it's like, this is like months after now, right? Uh, and you're like, Months after uh, you're okay, texting okay, me, okay. this is it's just kind of weird, now. okay? Yeah, 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 like, if you he was thankful then, like, sure, whatever, yeah. and like, I was kind of like, Eh. Like, I literally, I straight up told him, I was like, eh, like, I could have masturbated, but whatever. <laughs> um, just, no, it was just, I hated it. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. It was, like, a really bad time for me. Uh, and that's what, he's, like, a big reason why I was like, dude, I'm going to be in celibacy here. I'm, like, done fucking people. It's yeah. not worth it. So, I don't know, like, again. People, people, I would say people that, uh, it's, it's, it's always an awkward transition from, from being a virgin to, like, their first you know, just to, to starting to fuck like that's that's a that's an awkward transition for people, right? And I think I think for him, he was just yeah taking a bunch of shit out of the yeah no and again so I don't I'm not like mad at him like I don't blame him I don't think he's again I don't think he's a bad person sure 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 but it's kind of like I don't want you in my life like you know yeah you stay fast out of forward it. yeah um. Yeah, we wow, we went off on a tangent. tangent oh yeah, we were from like Twitter, from my era. You told you were asking me about my Twitter eras. Oh. <laughs> so I had right, I had my college. That, that era. was a long arc. That was a long. Yeah, arc. I mean, college arc was long. It was, was just a, a lot arc. of bad sexual experiences and like yeah, and I had tweets. I remember I had this. I had I had like really funny like cheeky tweets too. Just like a lot of tweets, like kind of like. Um, poking fun at like how a lot of guys don't treat women well during sex right like i would mm. talk a lot like things like the orgasm gap do you know the about this what was, was okay so, oh okay I right so it's like women come about 11 percent of the time when they're having sex like heterosexual sex like mm. when they have sex with a man they mm. come about 11 percent of the time and i like will go back through yeah i'll like go back through my mat like the list i've had and i'm like yeah that's pretty true about like one out of ten guys uh-huh and <clears throat> So I would, yeah, talk about stuff like that. Like and I would talk about stuff. a hundred percent of the time. Most of the time. But that's because that's, that's usually when sex ends. Yeah. And even um, if we don't come then we go home and jerk off. Yeah, sure. But, um, but yeah, I would talk about like experiences where mm. guys didn't treat me well. Right. Like, mm. like there was this guy who I, me I remember this tweet that went pretty viral where like this guy, I was like, oh yeah, I was hooking up with this guy and he wouldn't do foreplay mm. for me. So I jerked myself off during sex right, right. and then I came before him and then I was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I like flipped the script on him. I was like, okay, I'm done. Like get off, get out. Yeah. 
And he was like, what about me? And I was like, what about you? Like, you didn't do foreplay. Like, go jack off in the bathroom. I jerked myself off, you jerked yourself off. Um, so yeah, like, kind of like reversing the script and like, kind of, yeah, just talking about these different experiences that a lot of women resonate with. So I think I had that kind of era, those tweets like really blew up. Oh, or like, like the woman empowerment. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should get your nut ladies too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Get your nut. I'm such a huge proponent of getting your nut. Mm. Um, I mean, do you, do you think do you think girls could finish themselves off better than than see, guys can? I mean, I think every woman's body is different, but yeah. that's why I'm I'm a big proponent of like self pleasure, right? Mm. Like masturbate, like yeah. figure out what your body likes, figure out how you can pleasure yourself first before you start letting these people experiment on you who don't. Do you remember know the you? first time you masturbated? What was it? Was it like an explosion? <laughs> no. Oh, really? Was your first time an explosion? Yeah, that's how guys the first time. I think every single guy, their very first time, uh-huh. is like ye- like 13, 14 years of built up. And then the first time is just like a volcano. <laughs> it, it's just like an eruption. You're like, uh, uh, oh, oh, what is, what is, because uh, it's a lot. Wow. It, it, it's a lot that comes out. And you don't even know what it is. It's a mm. new feeling. That's so interesting. So it just. Yeah, I remember the first time it, it, it all, it, it just all started just lava just started coming down. I'm like, I should probably do something. What, what, what is this? Graphic image in my head. What is this? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Mm, this guy. This is weird. Mom. Um, <laughs> just I mean, I mean, my first time was like, I think middle school. That's when most kids kind of like, uh-huh. right? Uh, but w- it w- it wasn't like this like profound thing that like no oh my god I oh my god I actually wow uh, you like unlocked this memory uh, I remember I remember what happened it was I was reading a book oh and I had no idea that it was like an erotic novel right okay it was actually kind of funny because my mom my mom had gone to a garage sale and there was like a bunch of books on sale for like ten cents so she bought me like a stack of ten books mm. for dollar. And yeah, and I'm and it, they kind of look like romance novels, or I guess. Uh-oh. Um, some of them like even it doesn't even like it's just like a normal looking cover, like nothing romantic Sh- at sure, all. Sure, 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 sure. And I'm reading it, and yeah, and like I'm like a hundred pages in, uh-huh. all of a sudden, like they're describing a sex scene now, right? Like so, it's like a hundred pages of these two characters falling in love. Like you're really invested in it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, and like right, like they're both hot. Describe like they're both whatever. Uh-huh. And then yeah, and it's like oh, he starts taking her clothes off. Uh oh. Like. You know, he's like kissing her jelly on her neck. And, uh, like, oh, and right, I'm like, I'm like you feel it tingle. Like, yeah, and I'm like thirsty. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, whoa. Because right, like when you read a book, you, you see yourself in the characters sometimes. Uh, and I'm uh, like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What do, what do I do with this? <laughs> I feel like, I feel, I feel right? Like, sure, 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 like, sure. like, I, okay, I actually think my clit, at least, I feel like it's like a mini dick. Like, or actually, clits, yeah, I do think like anatomically <laughs> too thin. They're like mini dicks. Like, they, they actually. They like work in the same way. It's kind of like, it's almost like they get hard sometimes or it feels like they uh, get hard. Right, right, and they have right, right. all the nerve endings, right? Like that's where you, yeah. that's where you orgasm from. I don't and think so, it's a, it's, it's a, it's. Right. So like to use the mini dig metaphor, like I was reading this book and my, my clit like, she, like, she woke up mm. it was like, Whoop. and I was like, whoa. <laughs> jack my mini and I start, dig off. Yeah. yeah and I start, you know, and um, yeah, then I came and I was like, I was like, I was like, all right then. But it was, yeah, it wasn't an explosion because it's not like... Do you know how to do it? Like, because I feel like... I mean, you kind of get it, ish. I think I look... Because I, I, I just, like, 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 like my, my boys in yeah. school taught me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, well, nobody taught me. Nobody taught you? Self-taught. Uh, okay, you figured it out. Yeah. But not, not, not everybody, yeah, you know, I feel self-made like... self-made masturbator. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's just right, like, you... Because if, if, if guys all of a sudden get a hard, what, what, are you, what are you supposed to do with that? Right. You know, you can start I, like, do, do I just like, huh? Well, but that's the experimental part where it's just kind of like, whoa, it feels good here. It doesn't feel good there mm. at this point. Pa- yeah, but I was kind of like that. And then, yeah, I was like touching myself just like even over my pants. Right. Like the first time, I think. And then I was just like, whoa, like, oh, it, this is nice. I think I, yeah, that was yeah. nice. And then I kept reading. And then, yeah, I finished all 10 of those books. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I masturbated a hundred times at the end, and I think that's I, how I started my sex addiction. I, <laughs> this is why I am horny. I think that's why I became such a reader, actually, because uh, uh, that's how. Yeah, so that's what I'm used to now. But um, 
Yeah, it reminds me one of there one of my favorite tweets that I wrote was like uh is like 100k I think on Twitter mm. likes but it was like reading porn and masturbating call it literature. Oh wow, that's witty. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. But yeah, I do a lot of I, lo- I do a lot of little jokes like that where it's just kind of like literature. Good little yeah, good little punchline and then, you know, a little one word. Yeah, and it's just like kind of comes from my life but it's like really vague right it's never like yeah, oh yeah i never, read never uh, super explicit yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah um but i think that's that's fun about it for me because it's almost like i don't know it almost feels like i feel stupid for 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 <laughs> the way i started masturbating i remember I, I i gave it a try i, I think i said this on the main channel but i like i gave it a try when, when i was like when, when my boys told me to to oh yeah bro like you know you, you just gotta you just gotta stroke your dick like this it feels mad good mad good and then i remember the first time i did it i didn't know you had to be hard first so i just i went home and i just i was sitting on the edge of my my bed just stroking my dick i was like this, this is not doing anything for me what, what, what are they talking about it, it didn't get you hard that's interesting no nah, because i was looking at like like harry potter books i was looking at like <laughs> captain underpants was right in front of my face i'm like this is imagine masturbating to captain i'm not underpants. i'm not intentionally but i'm just looking at it i'm just like it just so ha- i'm right i'm just like huh that's crazy this is this, is, this doesn't work right i went i went back to my boys and they were like no you have to be like you, you dick gotta be hard like no homo no homo but it, it you have to be hard and then i'm like how do you get it hard man what there's too that's many ins- and and then they they suggested me some websites, mm. and then I realized, and then when I first went to those websites, it scared me. Mm. I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck are people doing? Mm. What the fuck?" I mm. exited it out, but I'm like, "Hmm, maybe I should go with like like sexy girls." So I just started typing like sexy girls on Google Images, and then and then I'm like, "Yeah, it's 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 really." You gotta figure it out. Yeah. With with with, with, with guys, especially. Yeah. 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 I was a little stupid. Back but then. but I even know. I don't know. Even then, I feel like guys still like at least you have friends that taught you, right? Like I mm. just feel like women don't have any kind of resource mm. to like figuring out their sexuality at all. Like I feel like now, like now is when like I have girlfriends that ask me like, yeah, like. What's yeah, a like good 20... vibrator? Yeah, what's a good vibrator? Or like, mm. what? Oh, yeah, what do you? At twenty five, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that's when I think that's when women kind of feel like oh, comfortable talking I, like, about it. Yeah, 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 I get to enjoy myself now, and it's okay. But I feel like so, I don't know. There's just so much shame around masturbation and self or, or, or just like like sex, and, sex talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just like, why? Like, Whereas like guys get accustomed to talking about that like from from from, yeah. from middle school. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's why my Twitter has a lot of content like that. Cause, mm. cause I think as soon as that stuff started going viral and I got yeah. messages from women that were like, whoa, like, honestly, you make me feel so seen. You make me feel like, like the feelings that I'm feeling are okay. And mm. like, and, and you're so funny and yeah, like it's like empowering and like, yeah, like I was able to have my first conversation with, you know, someone that I wanted to hook up mm. and like I mm. did and now, right. Like, I think that's really important. That's honestly really important to, again, just like talk about these things. Yeah. Um, did, did you ever so i i had a couple things but this is, this is this is a hard left um but did you ever talk about your parents or did any any tweets about your parents go viral um i talk about i mean i talk about my financial like situation with my family sometimes it's a crazy transition but yeah but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no but but i think that's good because it's like if you read my twitter it's uh. not all sex either yeah. like i like my pin tweet is about my like my life like mm-hmm. growing up poor and then it was about getting forbes 30 under 30 mm-hmm. like that's one of my like proudest accomplishments in life right and then yeah like or i post things about i don't yeah like i'm posting about my relationships like i've posted like really cute things that john has done for sure, me sure, sure. um and yeah i've posted things about like like funny shit about my brother like he's in med school he's having a hard time like now i remember the the, the forbes 30 under 30 mm-hmm. uh, uh tweet I think this is before I really got to know you, mm. and I was like, "Wow, this was this is pretty this is pretty cool." And you you were talking about growing up in a a, a Vietnamese household specifically. Mm-hmm. What what do you think makes a, a Vietnamese household a uh, a different from other Asian households? Mm, interesting. Um, I think I mentioned this on Under the Influence, but uh-huh. I think so. I think Vietnamese households tend to it tends to be like okay so 
yeah so so i backtrack a little into kind of like the just like who is immigrating right and if you oh. look about like the kind of like income bracket levels that people are coming so a lot of like chinese immigrants for yeah. example tend to actually be really wealthy like the people from china who immigrate to america are like doctors like people who have money in order to be able to come here yeah and so they come here and yeah. they are able to not me though like, not me but but yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah. a generalization yeah. but for the most part right like they they like become doctors or like have really like professional jobs here and then right like a lot of i mean yeah like the the kind of chinese kid you think about is like oh yeah like like piano lessons like tutoring sat Not even tutoring that, like, 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 like dri- dripped out in 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 fucking streetwear yeah, yeah. with a lamborghini like you always oh, see like super rich asian kids yeah on i mean campus. that's super rich but like even like most of them i think are pretty middle class like it's not okay. it's not you know um terrible but i think Vietnamese households are like Southeast Asia mm-hmm. for the most part. A lot of immigrants come as refugees or from war, right? Like from like the Vietnam War yeah. or from like the Cambodia, like kind of these things. And they actually come usually to like escape how bad things are in that country, right? Like how bad things were in Vietnam, like yeah. communists, are, you know, like um, people are being killed, mm-hmm. like things like that. Um, so my, yeah, my parents immigrated kind of under those circumstances of like, right, like they, they were losing their, their, like their jobs and their houses Mm -hmm. and like they had nothing left. And like, like my mom used to be like, um, fuck, like the whole, what's it called in English? Um, I was just saying Vietnamese. Uh, being, which is kind of like trying to escape Vietnam by boat. You're right. Like when people, like. Yeah, like when you're trying to like smuggle people out of the country, like my parents it, used to do is, that. Is this legal to talk about? Yeah, I mean, it's chill. It's chill. we're in the states yeah, now. <laughs> They're not gonna what do are they going to do? What are they going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like they did, yeah, but but that's what it takes to like escape from a country. Sometimes is you, it's you're literally. It's kind of like the way, like yeah, like a lot some like um people from Mexico try to like go cross right, the border right, illegally, right, like, right. like they're like, the smuggling in trucks. That's right. like. Yeah, the Viet version of that was like boats, but like that's are what you, my are you parents allowed were doing. To, to, are you allowed to leave the country? I think at the time that they tried to leave, it was just really like I, pretty chill. You could just hop on a boat and well, no, because it was oh. legal. Like they kept getting caught, and then they go to prison for it, and then they oh. get out. Yeah, they get out of jail, and then they like try to do it again. So I think I I think it's yeah, it was complicated, but it had to do with right like when Vietnam became a communist country, and mm-hmm. like everyone had mm-hmm. to like you know convert, and some people left, some people didn't like it, mm-hmm. like things like that. Um, yeah, didn't want to be under the new government. So was that a treacherous? Uh, is that how your parents came here? Yeah. Or? So eventually, one of my aunts made it. So my my mom's entire family was trying this, and I I think my aunt made it. Uh, married someone in the states, became a citizen, and then she was able to bail the rest of her family mm. over to the states. So that's how we ended up immigrating. But yeah, but basically, people that come from Vietnam, immigrants from Vietnam, tend to be people that are poorer, don't have a lot of money, are in like really bad situations that they're trying to escape so they come here my parents at least right came here no education never went to high school right don't speak english don't have an ounce in fucking savings yeah so they came here with nothing and couldn't like could barely get a job because they don't speak english and they have no skills so what what can you do like that's why there's a whole stereotype right of like vietnamese like ladies in nail salons like a lot of Vietnamese women come over here and that's all they can do like mm. kind of like manual mm, stuff because mm, mm, mm. you don't have any other skills in that and like it's not a job that pays that well right, right? and so or like they become like massage therapists or, right. right like give people massages in those like shady little parlors that yeah, like yeah. yeah and you end up like with like like shootings and gun violence right. um, but yeah like my mom used to work in a lot of places with a lot of gun violence like she literally this is, this is in houston in houston yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, like right like in chinatown and it's like like phone stores and like whatever like selling phones now, and, like, that, selling now that you mentioned it that's why that's why houston, houston has, has, has uh, such a big uh vietnamese population mm-hmm. is because for, by boat you wait hold on is houston no, like in no they don't do boat all the way to america oh, 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 okay, it's okay. like usually boat to like some other asian country uh, and then from there you kind of uh, yeah it's like okay a, okay no, no. never mind <laughs> it's okay but um <laughs> whoops it's okay my dear, but, I feel a little off. Uh, but no but right like my mom was working like my parents had a dry cleaner growing up uh-huh. like that's the kind of shit that we could do right um and that yeah that doesn't make a lot of money and so i think it, it's not so much that it's like your vietnamese that is different but i think income brackets make a huge difference in your upbringing because if you're like if your parents are doctors right like like Naturally, college going chinese do- yeah whatever opportunity versus like yeah your parents have a dry cleaner because they never went to high school they don't know shit yeah. and then 
and yeah, like my parents were batshit crazy. I've said this a lot, right? Because they were uneducated. So they don't, I mean, honestly, they don't know how to raise kids. And now they're doing it in a brand new country where they don't speak the language. It's an entirely different culture. And so they're just overprotective, right? Tiger parents, like you can't go out, you can't have friends, you can't do anything, yeah. right? Because everything is bad. Yeah. Um. And so they're, yeah, super overprotective, like, and I'm no money for, to do anything, right? Like I never, like I never got fucking piano lessons growing up. Like I never got like anything growing up, right? Um, so I think, right, like I think my upbringing was very much determined by, yeah, like how little money we had and like the lack of education that my parents had in order to teach me anything. So I felt, yeah, I felt like a lot of my life was very self-taught. Like I had to figure things out. I had to learn things in school and then actually come back home and teach my parents, right? Like this is how you file Dude. your taxes. This is how, you, yeah. you know, you should be raising your kids. I see, I see. So, but, but um, now I, I, obviously I think all, most Asian parents are, are are super tiger mom, tiger dad, mm -hmm. uh, super straight. But, um, you know, I, I think I talked about this on on, on, on Edwards, no, not Edwards, Eric's podcast, mm -hmm. um, where like they they have a really hard time apologizing. They have a huge issue with like, or just they they have they hold such a high ego. Mm -hmm right where they would never apologize that they mm -hmm. are wrong right and at the time asian parents kind of just like gaslight you into i guess i have to do this mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um did you did you ever feel did you ever feel or feel like that like you, oh absolutely you ever feel like um you want to speak up but somehow it just never comes across Oh, yeah, absolutely. Growing never, up, it never gets through to them. Oh, yeah. I mean, growing up, we never, I mean, we, we never saw eye to eye. We, we argued all the time. And it was so much like, again, it's, it's kind of, it's a similar thing, but it's like, right? Like, again, my parents grew up in Vietnam and they're taught a certain thing, right? Like, they're taught, like, oh, your kids have to be subservient free to you right and it's such a patriarchal society culture yeah. there right where it's like oh yeah and like the husband's the head of the household the wife does what he's mm -hmm. told the kids do what they're told like you know everyone falls in line everyone's super cookie cutter mm -hmm. like you know what what you expect um that'd be fun if like the the dad knew his his way around doing things right right but, but, but yeah no offense to, to, to yeah. i mean actually no so like a lot of offense to the dads <laughs> because sometimes you know like asian dads think they got that shit figured out but really like yeah. yo you, you a lot of times in asia you just yeah. dedicate your entire life to academics yeah like outside of that like they might have maxed out their, their academic they you know yeah. they go to yeah they, spent 12 hours in school yep. they don't know social cues yep. they don't know how to be yeah. successful in, yeah. in america yeah and but then they think just because they you know they went to school for, yep. for, for, for however long yep. they think they know everything no well, not at all it's it, yeah i think it makes it worse because it's again kind of like this god complex yeah. that a lot of asian dads and at least my dad had where we're like yeah in vietnam you're the shit you're like the male of the household you're like the you don't know shit you know, dad like you're carrying on our last name like blah 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 yeah. and it's like yeah no you you don't know any like you'll read a some lot of books pick up <laughs> you'll read some like go to bars and nobles you know, go to the self 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 help section and pick up some of those books, Asian dads. Oh, yeah. It, like I, it, like I read those books. Yeah. And it ended up helping yeah. me a lot. Yeah. Right. So why can't these Asian dads start reading yeah. those books? Yeah. That way they're like, oh wait, this yeah. is, this this works. Yeah. This works on the kids. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of parents are just kids. Like a lot of parents mm. are still just children figuring their own lives out. But now they have children of their own, and they have to they they either like pretend that they know everything or they just yeah like grow a complex where they're like well i'm the parent now and this is my right. household so what i say is the rule and what i say is right but i think my parents were like that where they were just like oh yeah like we're right you're the kid like how would you know better than us we're older than you like how would right. you know better than us um i don't i don't discredit some life experience that they've been through oh of course right? of course but i think i think just just even parenting i think there there, there has to be like better 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 like parenting yeah education no yeah yeah you know, just like learn how to be a parent yeah. yeah but i think no i think some yeah it was just tough but a lot of right like to your point they don't apologize like they don't know how to communicate because mm. their parents didn't teach that it's not right my if my dad grew up in a household that taught him how to say sorry or like right. do you like do you think his parents said sorry to him no yeah. so then he grows up thinking that's how to be a right, dad because right. my dad was a good dad i wouldn't be like him yeah. and then he's treating me this way now where like yeah like i mean my dad was 
Like, he used to, like, hit me for the smallest of reasons. And, like, even if he was wrong. What, what did he hit you with? Anything. Like, anything that was in his hand. He, he just started looking for shit? Like, if, yeah, if something. Like, I remember once. Start being you with I remember iPhone. once I, like, I accidentally, like, spilled water uh-huh. on the ground. Yeah. Like, I got, yeah. And he was holding a remote because he was watching TV. He just, like, slammed me on the head with the remote. Mm. God damn. Or like one time, like my sister. Was sis- it saran wrapped? Huh? Was it saran wrapped? <laughs> always. They don't okay. want to get the remotes dirty. It's uh, always. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's a little cushion <laughs> with a saran, yeah. saran wrap. Um, or like my sister, I think accidentally like dropped, uh, like broke something in the kitchen. Yeah. And he had, he was like cutting oranges or something. He just threw an orange at her. Like whatever's in his hand, just like. <laughs> He's like, they just don't, they don't know how yeah. to communicate their anger and emotions. Yeah. And so immediately it's just whatever, like punch, wall. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. what a lot of Asian dads do. Like they, and it's, it's, it's like, re- dude, relax, like calm down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, he's never said, he's just not a guy that talks to me ever. Like never communicates his feelings. I don't even think he knows how to understand his own feelings. Right. Cause yeah. no one's ever helped him with that through his, pro- his life. Yeah. Emotions. Now he's, yeah, yeah. Now he's like 50 and like, yeah, he doesn't say sorry. He doesn't say he's proud of me. He doesn't say he loves me. Right. And like, I just have to like help him like figure out ways to communicate that. Mm. Right. Like, I don't know. Like I let, like he's a very acts of service guy. Yeah. So I let him like, yeah, like make food for me mm. right when he can or like things like that. Or like he'll like in his own ways of like, Oh, talking about the weather or right, like talking right, about right. common interests. I think it's just like even just awareness and like education of like, I don't think they have like therapy back, back in oh. Vietnam. No, it's a, it's a huge like Asian Asian, country. There are a lot of Asian people that are very like against therapy or don't understand it. Like they think mental illness is stupid. Mm. Right. And it's, I don't know it's just not good for their kids like I just wish in general people knew that they don't know everything and that there's a lot to learn and sometimes yeah like sometimes your kids can teach you yeah. um and I think I've gotten to the point with my parents where like they listen to you now yeah I think I mentioned it a lot well I mean especially ever since I started providing for them and yeah. like paying for them and so it kind of s- switched the power walls around uh. but like yeah like sometimes they ask me for advice like what should I do about mm. this and like uh, that I'm, has to be like like a good good feeling though like that the first time where like that dynamic switched a little bit I'm like huh hmm. oh look who look what the cat dragged in that's interesting <laughs> it's i don't know it's not because i that, that was a good like feeling like a, a right. point of validation for me where um they saw the money that i was making and they mm. saw uh people like when 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 their friends started bragging or well not bragging but mm. started like oh your your son is you know mm. has so mm-hmm. however million views on on, on YouTube yeah. you know my daughter my son is a big fan of him yeah. once you know they start to hear shit from their friends right. that's when like oh wow right because they compare like they use you as a bragging chip oh yeah with with their yeah. friends it's it's annoying sometimes because right? it's like it's almost like they just care about like a flex how yeah like how they look to other people Mm -hmm. and like if you're making them look good to other people and it's not even about you and if they're proud of you that's yeah that's a a part of asian culture that i hate too that's so much just like like brag points to like your relatives but anyways oh uh, uh, you know like where did your daughter get, get into Right, <laughs> like like around uh, around like like a college acceptance. I, guess, season. I don't know. See, you you like, ever get that? Uh, you ever get that? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know. I I think it's tough. I feel like my parents always like they never made me feel good and like I was good enough growing mm. up. Like so even even like, even, like, no, you like Penn when I got full. accepted to Penn, the first thing my dad said was that's not Harvard, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I got a full ride to an Ivy League, but. It's not Harvard. Um, yeah, so my mom, my mom said she was proud of me. Okay. Though. Oh, I, I wonder what happens when you actually get into Harvard. D- d- is that when you get a thank you, or is that when you get a oh, can, good job? I think. See, I just it, don't it, think my dad has those words. It, like, it's just not part of his vocabulary. You know, it's like you know, it's like it's just a tool that's never been used. Like, yeah. if you pretend like your left hand. All your life, you're 50 years old. You've never moved your left hand in your life, right. and someone's like move your left hand. You actually can't because those much muscles are like dead, right? Or like they they just can't. Oh, wow. It's it's yeah. It's like a thing with people going through like physical therapy. Like even if they've like ha- like they broke their leg, haven't used it in like months. It's very hard to use it again. Yeah. Imagine 50 years you've never used your left hand, except your left hand is like communicating your feelings. Mm. 
Like he's never said like the words proud. If you're like say the words, I'm proud, Dad. Like yeah. I don't think he could get it out of his mouth. I think I think uh, I forgot who said this, who who suggested this, but they were like, yeah, you should you should slip some Molly in your dad's <laughs> your dad's drink, <laughs> your dad's so tea. Shy. Right? No, so it, honestly, it, sometimes I'm like, I should, I should get this guy weed. I should convince right? him. Right? Like maybe he'll chill him out. Maybe he'll like see something. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that that'll get his arm to start moving. <laughs> right? But it, it, it's crazy. I uh, recently, so my little brother mm-hmm. Eddie, like he, uh, so I have a younger brother, 18 years old. He just uh, got into UCLA. Good for all. I'm so proud so, of him. So, so he's he's coming to the West Coast with me, <gasps> right? And, and I'm, I'm I'm so happy that you know he got into UCLA. Yeah. Right. I'm congratulating him. Well, where's your family from again? Sorry. Uh, China. Ch- China. Okay. So he was in China. No, 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 oh, okay. no. He, he's <laughs> no, no. He, he was born here. He was born in. in he, he's New from, York. Yeah, New York. Okay. New York, New York. Okay. Sorry. Go yeah, on. yeah. We grew up in New York. Okay. I grew up in China. Anyways, okay. uh, grew up in New York. Um, and got into UCLA. Big deal. Um, UCLA. but. My mom super proud. My dad goes. D- d- next year you should apply to go to Yale. You know this year you didn't get, go to Yale, but I think I think next year if you get your report cards right, I Dude. think you should. Uh, I I think you should uh, apply for Yale. That's such a. And then he was like, he I I got like just like a wall of text messages from him, just pissed, heated. He he got into a, like a just a big fight with, yeah. with, 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 with pops and yeah. it was just like bro i i'm sorry you you had to go through that oh that's annoying um yeah and it's just like l- lack of awareness is it of like like bro like he just got into like a, ucla is a really fucking it, good school yeah i think it's i don't know it's just like a lack of empathy it's just like they don't, they're just never like, well, how's my kid going to feel if I say this? They yeah. just say stuff. They don't, because again, like all their life, they've been given positive reinforcement. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. again, you're the husband, you're the house sure. head of household, you're the dad, you get to, you know, do yeah. the stuff and like whatever you say goes. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that mentality, but it's like, like UCL is a great school. Yeah. And like, if you're, yeah, if you're not, ha- I don't know. I just hate- I think maybe, maybe like he's thinking about, hmm. If I got into UCLA, I'd be trying hard to get into I, Yale. But, but here's the thing: mm, I right? think I think I think a problem with a lot of Asian households is uh-huh. like so much of what is success to Asian parents yeah. is like very like resume things, like on paper, like what looks best on paper. Yeah. But it's never like, oh, what's gonna make my kid happy? Like, oh, what is yeah? Mm. What makes my kid thrive? What makes my kid feel fulfilled? Like, what does mm. my kid want in life? What, my, what does my kid want in the world? It's never because that's Asian parents. It's never what your kids want. It's right. what you want for your kids. And yeah. what do you want for your kids? You want what'll make the aunties like jealous, and yeah. what'll make aunties jealous? <laughs> so it's toxic. like yeah, it's like so it's like oh yeah, he went to Harvard, he went to Yale, he's a doctor. Uh, like that's why so many Asian parents they don't ask you what you want to be. They're oh, just like shit. you gotta be a doctor. That's the best thing to be. Like that's gonna bring me the most pride. Like the whole it, yeah, it's uh, honestly like Milan pride and honor bullshit. Yeah, but it's so much of like Asian. Like values and like filial piety, like you gotta live right. for your parents. Right. So I don't know. It's it's a yeah. It's a weird thing. Like my parents were so much of that growing up too. Like you have to be a doctor. You have to be whatever. Be Asian American is kind of weird, huh? It is so weird because you like American culture is so different yeah. from Asian culture, yeah, yeah. right? Like I mean, yeah, it's like a very right. It's like individualistic versus versus collectivist yeah. society, and like um, completely different. Yeah, upbringings and values and like. And and, and, and and yet, you know, we, we, we have these parents. I think it's gonna change with this generation, obviously. Yeah. But but I think um, you know, now that, that we're living in this country. But I feel like, you know, even moving forward, there there's always gonna be Asian immigrants. Yeah. And I think just that first wave of immigration, yeah. they gonna have it rough. No, they I gonna ag- have it tough think- when their parents are from Asia. Oh yeah. I think it's it's always gonna be like that's that's why there's a word for it, first generation. If yeah. you're first generation, like you're the first of your family to grow up in a new country, yeah. like you have your parents, like yeah, like your parents think a whole other way, and then you're learning a whole other way, and you have to kind of combine those two. Um, you but have yeah, to unlearn. It's a very it's yeah. a very unique identity to have. Honestly, I was I'm very thankful that I was because uh-huh. I think there's a lot of parts of like Vietnamese culture that I'm grateful for, and I think it like really Fuck. motivated me to <laughs> it really, like, really <laughs> motivated me to work hard. Um. But I don't know. Sometimes it's like, it's a little, 
yeah, it's a little sad. Sometimes I'm like, I wish, uh, this is going to sound so shitty to say, but sometimes I wish I had like Different real parents. Par- like better. Like I just feel like my parents, but well, don't get me wrong. They provided for me. They gave yeah. me food, yeah, yeah, shelter. Yeah, yeah. But, but beyond that, I don't know if they ever, yeah, they, they if they ever did things that I, I I think a good parent does that mm. I wished I had in a parent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I mean, it motivates me because I'm like, I want to be that for my kids. But like, I don't know when you, you said earlier, right? Like, does it feel a little good for your parents to come to you? And I don't, I don't know if it feels good actually, because like a part of me just wishes there were parents. <laughs> like, I just wish, mm. I wish I could come to my parents with problems and they help me mm. instead of vice versa. And because, because I've been doing it for so like ever since I was 18, mm. it's been like this ever since I was mm. 18, mm-hmm. like, I have to send them money. I mm. have to make sure they are fed. I have to make sure the bills are paid. Mm. And 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 not only, but yeah, they're coming to me because they don't know how to talk. They don't, like, I feel like I'm their therapist too. Like my mm. mom's like, oh, your dad did this. And like, you know, I'm having these problems. And like, think, now well, I got to deal with that too. How, how, do, how do you imagine your life would have been if you if you uh, grew up in Vietnam? I mean, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing my third world country. <laughs> Um, actually, sometimes, sometimes I'm like, if I were in Vietnam, I feel like I'd be like a little like, like those Vietnamese like child stars. Oh, because okay. I always loved like music and singing as a kid, like even as a baby, like even sure, sure. Yeah, right, yeah. like when I was in Vietnam or before we immigrated, uh-huh. like I was always singing to the point where like my mom used to like, like we used, I used Put to like perform it. at shows like as a kid, like oh. I used to like sing at like people's weddings or like little yeah. venues and people would pay me for it. Word. I was actually like a like little child star, oh, okay. but I didn't pursue it because I got really good at school. And then my mom was like, doctor. Mm. <laughs> now, now, you, you, you could have be, you could have been a, a Vietnamese rock star. Yeah. I think if Put I stayed in Vietnam, maybe. I think that that might've happened. Um, but then do you think life in Vietnam would have been more, more, more simple? It's hard to say. Well, yeah. that's the thing about life is you never know what the other route looks like. Right. Like I could be, uh, yeah, who knows? I could have grown up in Vietnam and then become a world famous pop star. I could have been Vietnamese, I don't know, BTS, who knows? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Or I could have had like, a simple life. Or Just, even a really bad life. Like, I could have, like, mm. ended up, like, yeah, like, uh, maybe I worked on the fields with my dad and was just, like, a rice farmer. Like, that's what his family did. And then, you know, never kind of broke out of that. Like, live in a little, like, village house. Like, get married at, like, 18, because that's what they do there. Uh, and, like, have kids by, like, 19. And, like, be with a husband that, like, didn't really care for me and, like, was kind of abusive. Like, mm. th- that's the life of a lot of Vietnamese women, right? Mm. So, who knows? So I, so I never go back. I never, yeah. I feel like I never really regret anything. But in you, life. you definitely like went back to the village, right? Oh yeah, and, yeah no. I, I mean, go back in my life. Like I never, okay. I never were like, oh, I wish I stayed in, or like I wish I pursued singing more. I wish, because sure, sure, sure. I'm just like, well, I'm happy with what I have right now, right. and I don't want it. Like everything else, it doesn't matter. Like I could be more famous, I could be less famous. Like I don't care. I like where I am. Yeah, but sometimes you know, I, I go back to the village because mm. my my dad also grew up in in a little like yeah. vi- village spot yeah. in, in in China. Yeah, and I go back to the village. I'm like, damn, I'm so grateful. Actually. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I so agree. No, I love. I mean, oh, I, love- I have to fucking egg chickens <laughs> for a living. Oh no. <laughs> No, I'm do. good on this. Do. Um, no, I'm so grateful yeah, for the yeah, life yeah, that yeah, I have, and yeah. I'm so grateful my parents immigrated us yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I go back. I love going back to Vietnam. Actually, I love the country. Mm. And I just. Part, I, don't know, I feel like, like maybe maybe like all the things we said prior to this may make it sound like we're ungrateful, but yeah. like it's just it's just kind of us venting a little bit. Yeah. But like, yeah. One once I go back and see 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 the chickens, mm. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to. No, these. I. <laughs> I want to do this. No, I agree. Like, and the huts and and the oh. yeah, they don't have toilet paper. Like no. it's all like the squatting toilet. You got an Asian squat. You can't even take like a like a nice little shit. No, nope. right? just it's it's like a it's no. like a it's like a it's like a yeah. A oh, hot cold water. No hot water. It's only cold showers. Mm. Only cold showers. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, I'm so grateful for my parents. Yeah. Like, I I think here's the thing. I think. I don't know why people are always like, oh, if you talk shit about something, then you like hate it or you're like ungrateful. And it's like, no, I actually think if you if you have critique for stuff and if you do it in like, it's like a productive way, right? It's not mm. just like, oh, bashing them for no reason, but it's like right. critique means you care about something, yeah. right? Like I care about my parents. That's why I provide for them. I take yeah. care of them. And I can also be like, hey, yeah, like they could have done these things differently. They could have said they're proud of me. Like mm. it's okay to ask for that too. Mm. And that doesn't make you ungrateful, right? Mm. Um, 
yeah i think uh, ungrateful is really only like it's like taking taking and never giving back right that's like ungrateful like mm. taking things from people not not thanking them never right, and then right, right, right. yeah which is very different than like just being like hey i wish my dad yeah didn't hit yeah. me with the yeah. remote i really hope i never lay on like a hand on my kids like that but yeah. like well again again that's how they were taught that's how they were raised that's what our parents think is the right thing to mm. do to discipline your parents but my parents you, you wouldn't ever hit, hit, hit your kid i just don't think that's the best way to teach kids Mm. I actually, I mean, I think there are studies that actually prove like, like positive reinforcement is more valuable than like negative reinforcement. Mm. Like, like if you, yeah, if they do bad things, you talk to them, explain, and when they do the thing you want them, you reward them. Then they, <sighs> then they keep doing that. You like have a lot of your kids, I don't know. Huh? Give them treats, you know, like oh, you got good grades, treats, treats, instead of like hitting them when they have bad grades. Because now they just live in fear instead of like oh, I want to get good right, grades. Right. So you want to motivate them. Right. Oh man, that's that's why I do so much negative reinforcement for things. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's that's what oh. your parents raise you, but you have to you have to beat that. You have to be like that's not the the good way to do it. Yeah. Like think. Sometimes think about, even with Gabe, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to help him like with his weight loss journey. Yeah. I'm like. Yeah. Man, you gonna stay fat forever? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, it depends. Instead but like, of like, you know, oh man. Oh, you look we're great. almost yeah. there. Yeah, 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 we're almost there. I mean, how do you feel when you're like in a relationship, right? And you have a you have a girlfriend that's just like always nagging. Like, you know, do the dishes. She's like, you're so fucking dirty. I fucking hate you. Like, this is disgusting. Like, dude, you're, mm. I don't know, you're broke. You need to buy, you need to do better for me. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, like angry and mm. like negative versus like, when you do do something nice and she's like, oh my God, this made me so happy. Like, thank you. And like, and yeah, and when you forget, then she's like, oh, this made me really sad. Like, I wish you, you know, mm. I wish you bought me something for our anniversary. Like, mm. what do you feel like would resonate better with you? Mm. Like, otherwise, you're just always going to be in fear. Like, yeah. oh, shit, shit. Did I forget what I do wrong this time? What did right. I do wrong this time? That's why, that, maybe that's why, like, Asian people are so hard to date. Huh? Yeah, they, we all have such a We all have fucking, yeah, yeah, we always have fucking and, problems. And a lot of, a lot of the people just aren't, they're not self-aware about it. They don't think, they don't, they're not, like, evaluating, like, oh, is what no. I'm doing correct? And, like, where is it coming from? But I don't know. I think about this stuff all the time. Yeah, they, they don't look back on their childhood back. Yeah. How, how, yeah. Yeah. But no. Oh, funny story though. My parents used to literally, our house had a spot dedicated to ass whooping, where it's like when you fucked up, like I know it was crazy. It was great. I was like Pavlov the negative way, where like when I fucked up, I knew, I knew I went I, to the corner. I, I like right you, and then you, you're supposed to like lay down with your ass up, and my mom has this like stick, this like wooden plank. Uh -huh. And they just like, like in the fun, <laughs> like have you ever, <laughs> like have you ever seen like imp like old imperial like Chinese oh, movies of like plank? In, where where like where like you get like if you like stole a chicken or something you go to court and then they give you like a whooping in court. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It yeah. was like that. It's like yeah you lay down and then it's like three <laughs> spanks like three spanks depend or if it's worse then you get more and it's like five. Spanks. Right right right. If, if if you cry you get more spanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I was supposed. To I'm so, go, go. I'm supposed to hold yeah, back the tears crazy. so I don't get more spanks. Sure, yeah, but I remember I go to the corner and then she'd be like, "You missed the bus again." I'm like, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> and the, and it's crazy because so after for the bus. Yeah, yeah. I remember Damn. my worst ass ass whooping was because I missed my school bus. Damn. Yeah. You you couldn't have just, I mean. T Took the next one? No, there's just like... There's only one, one yellow bus. Oh, yeah. so that, does that mean you're not going to school that day? No, I missed the one ho going home. So then they had to go to school to pick me up. Oh, oh, just shit around the house. I, yep. I just remember just shit started getting thrown at. Thrown there you at go. Me. There you go. That's my dad's, that's my dad's secret move. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got to start like dodging shit. Like, I mean, a Fiji and, bottle, mm, you mm -hmm. know? Did, did you... Because I, I remember at one point, this is bad. I started throwing shit back. I started I throwing shit back once. at him. That was the last time that hit me. Was when I just like. Oh really? I I, I, I like kick back. Oh yeah. shit! Because normally if you throw back, they, they they return with like three times the the violence. Right. No, I th I don't know. I think it's I think it's maybe different because I'm a girl too. Okay. But like my dad, I remember he like like slapped me or something once. Yeah. I got so mad, I just kicked him. <laughs> I got kicked him, and then he was just oh, like no. he was shocked, but he like. He stopped touching me, oh, and okay. we didn't speak for like three days because right, he was so right, mad right. at me, and I was mad at him. Then my mom had to like it was a whole thing, and yeah. then and then they stopped hitting me after that. 
Yeah, so I think sometimes you just get to an age where you're like, I'm not taking this shit anymore. Yeah, you're like 25. You're like, <laughs> Dad, I'm going to beat you up. You're an old man. <laughs> Why are you still hitting me? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Your dad punches you. <laughs> you're like a boxer. Like, Dad, this doesn't hurt me anymore. <laughs> Oh. Wait, that hits me. I'm going on Twitter. Like, man, y'all will not believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I'm gonna cancel you, Dad. <laughs> dad, smile. Mm. Wait till the end today is about this. <laughs> yeah, oh. You guys better dox him. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I just, I, I remember, I. My, my, my dad was like, oh, you, 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 you think you, you could hit me? Mm. And then th- th- that's when he like took off the belt. And then well, well, the once belt the belt came scary. off, I that's was like, scary. I was like, oh shit. Oh man. Cause I, I'd be scared too. Cause, cause it, it, it would leave bruises. And then mm-hmm. like, oh, I was like, well, what are the kids at, at school going to think? Yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't go to college, did you? What the fuck? <laughs> I did. I got my I got I got my bachelor's. Oh my, where'd you go? UConn, University of Connecticut. See, but like, sorry, I just I'm just going. Yeah, back it's to not your, an Ivy League. No, I but know. why is your dad like upset at your brother? Because it's not like right. I, I went to a way shittier school. That's what I'm saying. Like he's he's going up. He's like like if yeah, the the, the family's elevating. Yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe the last never, one was a little. It's just never good enough. It's no, good no, enough. no, no, it never is. Did he give you shit too? Like when you got yeah. to UConn, was it also like? Oh, I think he almost you. gave up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I think UConn was like, damn. Oh, there might not be hope for you left. Damn. All right. You, thought I, you thought I didn't go to college? I don't know why. I was just because I just remember you've done YouTube since I, you were like. I, I sound like a guy that didn't have college. Education, no, you. Because huh? I thought you did YouTube since you were eighteen. Oh no no. But I mean, granted, I majored in communications. <laughs> but no, you're might sm- as well not you're, go to you're college. Sm- you're smart, Jimmy. You're smart. Oh, uh, commu- communicate. <laughs> do, do they do they even offer that in, in Ivy League schools? <laughs> I think so. Oh, okay, okay. I good. don't know. Okay, I, don't, I, don't, I think so. It's pretty. Okay. Co- it's a common major. It, uh, yeah. Right. I think. Yeah, it's too common. It's like, what do you what do you do with a comm major? You know. I mean, people do biology you, majors and yeah. then go work at boba shops so like yeah they're, they're 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 a little lost but um no, and it's not their fault. again you're living like it's asian kids growing up in households that are like, you have to be a doctor mm-hmm. then they go do these majors that they don't care about mm-hmm. and then it's like yeah being a doctor is really fucking hard and miserable yeah did you ever have a check come in to like your account where your parents are like oh <gasps> yes uh-huh. summer my junior year of college uh uh-huh. Uh, I had a finance internship, so yeah. I had an investment banking internship at Credit Suisse. Uh-huh. Uh, so I was in New York City for the summer, and that job pays a lot. I mean, it was like forty dollars an hour. Yeah, but the thing is, it was a lot of hours. Okay. Like I was working like nine a.m. to like three a.m. Like over like on weekends, Jesus I was working Christ. Saturdays. I was working Sundays. Were you living in New York City too? Yeah. That's expensive. Uh, yeah, but I was I was like sharing literally a studio with someone. Oh shit! Okay. So I was paying like thirteen hundred for uh-huh. rent. Yeah, I was I was I was a hustler. Uh-huh. So it was like a hundred twenty hours a week at forty dollars. <laughs> yeah, and then overtime they pay you more. So overtime hours become sixty dollars. So most right. of my hours were like overtime hours. So a month you might be making fifteen to twenty k. No, so I think that summer I made like. Before taxes, I think it was like 25K. Okay. And that was crazy. Yeah. Because I told you, my parents, growing up, they never made more than $10,000 a year. Mm. Both of them made less than 10K a year. Mm -mm. And in one summer, I made double that. Mm. And that was crazy to me. I Like, I think we all just, I I was just like, I I was going, yeah, I just remember going through a whole phase where I'm like, money is not real. I'm like, this is all, (laughs) this is Fake like this, I'm like yeah I was like, I'm like this is such a simulation because I'm in New York City I like go into a Kate Spade for the first time the bathroom is like nicer than my house then I come back home and I'm like wow my room has no furniture in it still I'm like what is going on here I'm like I'm like I got like yeah, I'm like I'm like yeah finance job where I'm like click clacking away on like yeah. a PowerPoint yeah. like working in Excel like ooh like. Five times ten equals fifty. I'm like, just doing regular numbers. I'm I'm making fucking. And it was crazy. It was crazy. It was great. And I'm like, yeah, like my parents work hard too. And it's like we never saw this money in our lives. And it was just Mm. 
yeah, that yeah. What was their reaction when they, when when they saw it? I mean, they were really proud of me for mm. sure, and I think we all I think we all felt really relieved. Yeah. Because I got a return offer, so that was my full time job. Yeah. Uh, gonna be my full time job after I graduated. So it was very like, okay, thank God, like I graduate, I have a I have a job that pays well, like I'm gonna be able to take care of all of us. Because yeah. I think we always, I mean, I always live in a lot of fear. That's like, if when I don't. When you make- saw that money come in, did you cry? Was that an emotional moment for you, or because the mo- money could, could it, it gets real emotional for for Asian people? I think so. I think it's just like uh, mostly to me, it was just like unreal. Like I just couldn't I believe. Can't believe I made this much this summer. Yeah, mm. and that like I had the ability to because I think right you live you you live in poverty for long enough and you're just kind of like I don't know if I'll ever get out. Like uh, I think it's just always gonna be the same old same old. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm Yo, gonna- it's almost like that pursuit of happiness. You ever seen that movie, mm-hmm. Pursuit mm-hmm. of Happiness? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. He he was kind of like living in the slums, and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden he gets this big fi- corporate finance job, mm-hmm. and he walks out of the guy's. It was one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. He walks out of the office just like tears of joy, like yeah. scrolling down his face. I was like, yeah, it's kind of like I, that. I right? think for me, I cried when I got the offer. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I cried. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, oh my god, I got. I can't believe I got the job. Yeah. you know. And then then I worked it, and I mean, it was an awful job. So then, then I was hard. <laughs> yeah, then, like it was hard. It was hard to be happy because I'm like, yeah, I like I like bled for this money, so I'm like not as happy about it. <laughs> But, um, and then it was kind of, well, the thing about, right, like, my family has a lot of debt, so it's, like, the money It all went, went to paying so all the debt. So quickly. Yeah, yeah. So qu- It's just, like, oh, shit, we were, like, right, we were, like, in a hole, mm. and it just, like, kind of, not even, like, the, right, it's, like, if you're in a, if you, the, you're in debt and, like, it's a big hole, that's, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then the 20K is just, like, whoop. <laughs> you don't, and it's still a hole. Oh, you don't uh, even see it. Where'd the money go? <laughs> yeah. I thought I made a whole twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, then I go back to then I go back to school the next year and I'm eating like Subway sandwiches all year because I have no money. I'm like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Here you go, government. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, debt debt is, is 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 detrimental to people's like livelihoods. Um, that's why like I I hate college for a lot a lot of the reasons because of debt. No, I you agree. Know? I agree. I think I, I hate that like college sometimes feels like the, like you push all the kids into, you're like, oh, you have to go to school. You have to. And like they're 18 year olds. They have no idea what they want to do with their lives. They like do majors. They don't care about. They pay tens of thousands of dollars for it. Now they're in debt and you never prepared them for it. Like, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's very like sometimes exploitative because it's just like these colleges are just like businesses running to like profit off of kids Mm -hmm. instead of telling kids what they need. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think college should be free. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna like push everyone to get an education like Mm -hmm. that, then it should be free. I think, I think there's certain things that that it needs to be paid for, for a great college experience. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, having the the nice little gyms, the the school, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, the fucking basketball Mm -hmm. stadiums and the Mm -hmm. baseball stadiums. And, and, you know, I think there are some things that should be paid for, but for for us Mm -hmm. to get charged like 50, 60, $70,000, I think that's a little wild, yeah. but I, 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 I'm, I'm curious to, to think like, is that really the amount of money you need to, to, to pay for a really like good school or, or is it like, is school truly run by like a business where they are, the margins are like kind of crazy on, on college tuition? I really, I don't know most again, like. I think I'm really Ivy, curious. Ivy, Ivy, Ivy's are very different, but mm. I think like pe- like Ivy's are actually I think they're run as businesses. Mm. Like they invest the money that they're getting. They have a board that runs. It's very much about like profit sometimes, right? Like mm. it's right. They're private institutions, right. but yeah, they're charging like Penn tuition was like seventy five thousand a year. And then four years, that's yeah, you're half half at. or like a quarter of a million, two fifty k. Yeah, two hundred a quarter million in debt. You are starting your life at at a negative. Well, it's more than that. So I can't do my, it's like 300K. Yeah. Like yeah. A, a third. You know, at 21, 22, you are starting your life yeah. at a negative. I and mean, yeah. I mean, the, the good thing about Ivy Leagues is they do scholarships if your family's poor. Mm, so okay. I didn't have to pay yeah. for college. Um, but a lot of like kind of like middle class incomes kind of get fucked over because mm. they have to pay a lot still. And it's like it's it's tough on their families. But yeah. I don't think I don't think. Yeah, I don't think people end up in debt, though, with Ivy Leagues, at least. But okay. with like state schools, like, yeah, they don't. Okay, okay. You're on your own. It's tough. And sometimes you might not even get a you get a job that don't even pay that well. You know, Dude, my heart so goes out to, to, to all the people working at 
it's not something to laugh at. What, what did I do? Not at all. No, it's really, it's really. It's tough. Yeah, it's. I, I just wish, I just wish these the eighteen year old kids like knew more about like what they wanted with their lives and like had people teach them that and te- teach that they like, have teach, a choice. Yeah, yeah and teach to, kids more financial literacy too before just throwing them into the fucking wilderness. Yeah. To figure it out. You ha- you have a, you you don't have to accumulate this debt. You th- the, the things that you are learning in these schools, you might learn them on YouTube. You you just might learn them on YouTube. Um and there are courses out there on like Skillshare fucking yeah. pay 10 dollars a month. Yeah. Get a whole sh- shit to, well skillshare is more on like creative education but um yeah there's just i feel like the online education it's, it's so much cheaper mm-hmm. and yeah it's just not worth mm-hmm. worth all that all that debt mm-hmm. yeah debt is scary man yeah. and it just it it, accum- it just keeps getting like interest just fucking accumulates yeah it's it's so awful yeah it's so awful um, that's why social mobility is so hard like that's why like people mm, that are poor stay poor wow Cause, cause it's like right people. I hate the whole like, oh, you just have to work hard, and that's just that's not how the system works. Like, like if you think about it, like bank overdraft statements. Who are who is getting charged by banks? It's people that are poor. So you're charging right, like you get charged by the, your bank because you don't have money in your account. So yeah. now you now they charge you thirty dollars. You have negative thirty in your account. Like, so so, so what do you think is the ridiculous. secret to to social mobility? How do you go from a surf to a night? Or maybe, you know, a a uh, somewhere in, in, in of royalty. Man, I I don't think there's like one formula. I mean, I can only say how I did it, yeah. or which is very unique to me. But like, I worked really hard in school. I was yeah. valedictorian, so I got I had. Do you I think there's the there's some stats. luck involved? Oh, absolutely. There's luck in everything. Even with you, like think mm-hmm. about YouTube for example, yeah. right? Like ev- everyone wants to be a YouTuber. Yeah. And how do you get there? It's some combination of like you have to work really hard, you have to be consistent, you yeah. have to find what works, study it. Yeah. And then you also just have to be a little lucky and like blow up, have mm-hmm. a video blow mm-hmm. up, and mm-hmm. people keep coming back to you. So yeah. there, there's I think there's so that's what I did too. Like even so, school was my route. I was really good in school, right? Like I studied really hard. I got my A's. I had perfect test grades, test scores, everything. And then, but even then, so like everyone that applies to an Ivy League has these stats, right? These, this is the basic stats. And then it kind of comes to the people reading your 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 essays. Like, do they like you or not? Yeah. Do they find you interesting or not? Yeah, like it, it, and then in, it's a little in, bit of in, luck. in a sea of UPenn graduates, you're still just a regular. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you if you actually I, I'm pretty sure they, they did a study on this, too, where like if you take a good amount of like uh, the kids that were rejected from Harvard yeah. and you replace that with the existing class, they have nearly the identical statistics because they're all valedictorians applying to Harvard and Harvard just can't take all of them. Right. So they just they kind of then you kind of get lucky. But yeah, so it's a it's a mix of like you have to work really hard and then there's a definitely a luck component to it. Yeah, but I think I think I don't know. Like, if I had to say like a formula, it's like yeah, you do have to you do have to work hard, but I think you have to play the game, right? Like, you mm-hmm. have to like you have to figure out what you're exceptional at. Like, I don't think right. Like, yeah, if you're not like entertaining, mm-hmm. like I don't know if YouTube is a career for you, right? Mm-hmm. If you're not a good singer, I don't know if music is the career I, for you. I like, also, you got to pick something you think you're exceptional at, yeah. and then commit to that craft. I, I think beyond that though, like if you if you if you are, you know, in in the lower class, but you're young, you you get the chance to potentially find like find an opportunity where where you get to be around maybe like a knight or you know it's just someone, uh, a, a master at their craft, right? Mm. Just just work for them, right? And and this is kind of a, a piece of advice I got from Gary V, and then mm-hmm. he like strongly advises people take on like apprenticeships mm. for, uh, for 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 things right apprenticeship that sounds like some shit from like the 1930s right but really that's a great way to to actually learn new skills that that you know that will help you eventually become that person and also just from the connections that uh, being around that person mm-hmm. naturally will allow you to uh, i think elevate your life mm. i think yeah beyond the the regular school system right mm. you go through a system i feel like mm-hmm. y- y- you're just gonna be like a product of, of the system right rather than like 
your own free will and mm-hmm. and, and and choosing your own yeah path i agree i life. think i think being intentional with like what you want and what you're good at is mm-hmm. important um but i i don't know at the same time it's also like there's also nothing wrong <laughs> how do i say i don't know i think there's also nothing wrong with being normal or being average like you actually don't have to be famous or like yeah be, yeah but yeah. like I, like social mobility can be small too, right? Like, yeah, you can come from a really low income background and get a nine to five. Yeah. And that's awesome too. Yeah. That's like awesome. Like you could, yeah, get like an accounting major, go right. get an accounting job, yeah. right? Like work at a big four accounting firm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make your like 80K a year or something yeah. like that. That's awesome. And you yeah. can support a family and have a nice house and like do what you need to do. Like it doesn't have to be like, like yeah. bust like all go big or go home right. either right like there's a middle ground too yeah um, i think my, my my friend my friend young he, he used to do social media mm-hmm. he was like a decent sized tiktoker and then um i i visited him a year ago and i was kind of having this conversation I was like oh you're not doing social media anymore he's like no nah, man i kind of i kind of want to just get a job i'm, I'm kind of happy just having a girlfriend going going to work and just Living a, a chill life, coming home to my friends, maybe play some video games, all right, and just just yeah. a simple life. It just yeah. it makes me happy. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. and, and I see I see the happiness. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, this yeah. is not. Nah, he, he's right. Yeah. You know, not everybody needs this uh, ultra ambitious life, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. it's it's fun. You know, I, I actually I resonate with that a lot. I, I actually don't think I need a lot to be happy. I mean, mm-hmm. I've told you this like, honestly, all I want in life is to fall in love and get married and have kids and yeah. be able to provide for those kids and like have a nice little house. And I want a garden because I, I want to plant stuff. But like, I don't need much more than that. And I think this is really interesting. There's actually a study I, I learned uh, in a class, but they basically plotted. So it's like a graph uh-huh. of like um, income and like or income on the this axis and then on the other axis like Happiness. how happy you are uh-huh. yeah and there's a positive correlation for a while obviously mm-hmm. right like if you're yeah if you don't have money for food you're gonna be unhappy and then yeah. right so it correlates but then there's a satiation point which is basically the point the amount? where it changes where it like starts to dip where it, uh-huh. um where it changes and that point is always be- it's like not that high it's like around like 150k or something like salary uh, depending on oh, where you live. Well, no, depending on where you live. So that's kind uh, of like New York or something like okay, that, right? Okay. Where it's like, but it's basically the amount where like you are able to cover everything that you need. Yeah. Like, like not luxury stuff. Just like you have a car, you have a house, yeah. like you can go out and eat, you have your gym membership, yeah. like, like those kind of things. And nothing crazy, right, right, right? right? But that's where people are happy. And anything more than that, like you upgrade from like your Toyota to like, I don't know, like a Lamborghini, you're actually not that much happier usually people are actually no yeah it's temporary yeah and usually people are more unhappy because then after that point it kind of becomes like a status game and that's something really interesting that i saw huh. with a lot of like my friends like parents at penn like so right all the kids at penn are like billionaire kids like millionaire bill- like mm. no like kids at ivy leagues are rich rich like 99 percent of them are like in the top 10 percent income back bracket like oh, that's shit. like the t- statistic uh-huh. like less than yeah, like less than ten percent of students at Penn are are like their families make less than like sixty k. Okay. So ninety percent of them are like top ten percent. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, but yeah, I was talking to this girl, and her parents are literally billionaires, and they're unhappy, and she's unhappy. They're like abusive. They don't believe in mental health, and like they feel like they're not rich. Like they need to be the richest person in their neighborhood. They need to have like have the most cars in the neighborhood. They need to have like the best kids in the. Which is most of the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like people lose what's important to them when yeah. there's when it's almost too much, right? And yeah. you like indulge in that and you forget like like I think as humans we weren't made for like like we don't need private jets to be happy. Like humans kind of just want like we just want friends, we want love, we want a family, like we want to We want a eat, garden. Be healthy. I do want a garden. Want a garden? I want a fruit tree. Do, do you do you want a do you want a, like an interesting little pet? Do you want like a rabbit? No, I just want a dog. You just want a dog. Yeah, but like that's not that much. Like yeah. I don't need I don't need like crazy cars or purses or whatever. And I actually sometimes yeah like I mean I, right like we're ambitious people and like I'm a founder which is a very crazy job. But sometimes I'm like listen a simple like life sounds nice. I'm like if when all this is over I don't know if I'm gonna be a founder again. I'm just like mm. I'm just like I kind of just <laughs> like I want I want work life balance. <laughs> I want, you you want work life. 
I no? want work life balance. Yeah. I just want I just want to like not cry <laughs> on the <laughs> during the week. <laughs> oh, my life sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> no, we can we you you can you can vent to me after this. That's fine. No, um, I mean it's it's fine. I mean, okay, okay. It's just hard, sure. but it's like you it's like hard? I just don't think like I don't think people need like I don't want to give people advice that like oh you have to commit to like hustle culture like you have yeah. to grind you have to like be a girl boss right. you have to like if no. you're a C, if you're not a CEO then you're failing like that's just not true like I really think success is about being happy and doing what's good for you yeah and that yep. does not have to be like correlated to wealth or status or anything mm-hmm. like that yeah absolutely well spoken well said well said well I'm I'm happy chasing the bag so. <laughs> <laughs> While you raising your little family there, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep hustling. You can be the you can I'm be the keep... <laughs> you can be the cool rich uncle that yeah. like drops by. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, why, why is yeah. he? You wanna so... be the godfather of my kid, Jimmy? Godfather, S- Jimmy. Did I? Ask? Yeah, I would let you. I would let yeah for one of them, not all of them. Uh, right, 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 right. You pick for one. one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's Godfather Jimmy. Yeah, he's not married, but he's happy though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to be married. Like, there's no one right recipe to life. Yeah, he has like three girlfriends, but he, he, he's happy though. That, that's just Uncle Jimmy. Is that what you want? Jimmy? No, <laughs> no. That, it, it just sounds like that's my internet persona, but then I don't oh. know. Maybe. But in reality, Jimmy has no host. That's why he's here with me. All we do is hang out every week. You gotta be. I'll show you my host. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah? Yeah. All right, let me see. Let me see. Who are you taking to EDC, huh? <laughs> To be determined. No hoes. To be determined. Too many hoes. I'm sorry. So look, look at this. I'll show you later. Yeah. Too too much to show. Okay. I got no hoes. Oh God. I might refer back to being a virgin. You want my, you want John? Uh, day forty five. We both have John. He's day forty five of not having sex. <laughs> yeah, you you do my bit now. You do my bit. Boobs and are I- starting. The the the, <laughs> the lamp in my room are starting to look like boobs. Oh yeah, I'll take John. Yeah, no, there's enough dick to go around both of us. <laughs> did did you write these? Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if if I was having a bad day, of course you wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, what? I don't know how that got there. If, that. If that I was having been, a bad must day, have been someone. <laughs> would you eat my pussy as a friend? Would you platonically lick my cooch? Of course. Really? Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. But you know, I, I'd I'd probably be like, oh, you you really need this. Like it, like this is this got to be the worst day of your life. Mm. You know. Mm-hmm. Like if you're having a bad day, like John could eat your pussy. Right. Well, right. I mean, assuming John is, I don't know, like can't or like. I'm single or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, I, yeah, no, it I, had to be you. Like I, you're the only yeah, person that could do it. I would. I appreciate that. Yeah. I would for you. I have. I actually have. This might be correct, but I have sucked dick platonically. What? Like it wasn't like I didn't like the guy. It was but just. But he was a homie. Yeah, he was a homie, and he like, I think had never had his dick sucked before or something like that. And I was like, I mean, do you well, want? I'm here. <laughs> I was like, like, I was like, you know, we're in college, like stressful semester, and I'm just kind of like, do you want it? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And we did it, and then nothing else. Wow. I'm a good friend. I'm a great friend. You are <laughs> <an> amazing. <laughs> you sure that didn't like destroy the friendship? No. No, you just got. He was like, oh, appreciate you. Yeah. That, wow. well, I don't know because I just I wasn't attracted to him or anything like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, must be nice. <laughs> that that's what you were my friend back in college. I don't know. I think I again, needed some good ticks. So I'm like my boundaries are very open, but like I'm also like a very physically affectionate person, right? Like yeah. I like like I hold hands with my friends, right? Mm. Like I like do cheek kisses with my friend. Like well, that's pretty. That's that's Spanish. That's a Spanish culture. Right, but but imagine like. Like Jasmine Rice girl culture, where like I suck dick for my friends, like. <laughs> but that's just like to me. That's like that's like a cheek kiss, you know. That's just like oh, this will make you. I eat pussy for my friends. <laughs> it don't it don't it don't work the same. Imagine I pull up to my homegirl. Yo, if you're ever having a hard day, <laughs> yeah, I could eat your pussy. Huh? You know 
my friend anymore. What, what, what the fuck? You might have pepper spray me. That's abrasive. Okay, but this is what I don't. I don't go around promoting it either. Right, 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 right. It's like it's like. Oh well, no, now you are. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not offering you guys, just Jimmy. Okay. Right, Jimmy, if you needed it, and John said okay. Yeah, yeah. In a world where like, you know, everybody died, Thanos snapped. You know what I'm saying? Our our loved ones are 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 gone, and like you know that that's that's a rough day. That's a rough day. We wake up. Yo, where, where, where's Gabe? Oh, you see on the not, news, you see Thanos Gabe. just snapped. <laughs> oh man! Damn. So I, you're saying Avengers Endgame? There was a lot of dick sucking that day. No, they they don't they don't have Jasmine Rice girl in the universe. They they should. Yeah, yeah. They should. They should. They should. Um, that's a very different question though. Like, if there were the if there were only two of us left in the world. Uh huh. <laughs> oh no it's uh, on site we're we're, we're fucking <laughs> on site what the fuck we need we need to get this we need to get actually no 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 it's not on site because we probably should take some, some a, a, a little bit of time to see if like you know may, maybe it's just it's just you know uh, no, that's, that's there's like a pandemic again no. and we're like oh there's nobody outside oh we should fuck and the next thing you know you know you see people <laughs> walking out of their home oh shit it's funny no, no, the, I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah, no, there's just us two in the world, and it's mm. our job to like carry on humanity to repopulate this. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you? I, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I think I mean, I think, I think, here's my thing. I think I just, well, one, it's like, yeah, like I don't want the human race to go extinct. Yeah. You're not that bad of a guy to Come procreate on. with. Come on. And I want, and I want kids. Yeah. I want kids. But it'd be, but we'd have to like, it would take, like, it wouldn't be immediately. Like, I think maybe... Right, we, we need to scope out the earth a little bit, right? To see if the, like, oh, wait, uh, is, is everybody really... Oh, for, no, for me, it's more like I need to reframe how I see you in my head. Mm. It's just be hard. It'd be like, because you're too much of a brother right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be... T- yeah, how would I... Because I wonder if I could... Like, what if I what if I just start laughing? You're like... a mustache. No, that's, that's too funny. You just got to disguise uh, yourself as someone back. else. <laughs> I'm like I'm like Jimmy. I can do, but you have to you have to pretend to be John. You have yeah. to call. <laughs> well, I just got I just got to be a different person. You know, I just maybe maybe I just come with a British accent. <laughs> Rosie, w- w- would you like to go out on 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 a bit on a date? Would you? Would you? Would you consider that? Oh, why is this working? I'm, I'm, why is I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, wait a, just this, wait a this, second now. This Hold on. Hold Jimmy on. This, this is, this, is, it's not Jimmy because I'm, because yeah. this this is this is. I'm like, who is this? This is. Oh, fuck. It's working. It's like tricking my brain. It's like this is not. This is a different person. This is not my podcast host. This is like. This is this, what's a fucking British name? Uh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> That, that's that, good though. That's good. Right, right. That's a good. That's a good. I get like, like you just change your hairstyle up mm-hmm. a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just maybe grow the hair out, right? Because you know, oh. there's no barbers left in the world. Oh wow! Right. That's crazy. Get a, get a ponytail or something. That's great. This. Yeah. This makes me think of a different question though, but like, is it true that for a me lot and Lynn of- have that pack too? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. No, I have a couple of friends. I have a couple of friends where, like, we've talked about it before, where it's like, like, end of the world, like, mm. yeah, you're my we, man. We got to. Yeah, got, got to. Got to. Got to. Yeah. But For I would the never. Sake of would humanity, ne- of course. But on a normal day, like, no. no right, right, right. friends. Wait, I have a quick question, though. Yeah. Is it true that for a lot of guys, like, whole is whole? Like, it doesn't matter. A whole is a whole? Yeah. Like, whole. Like, like it doesn't, like, you just put it in a hole. Like, like, like oh, it saying, doesn't feel weird if I'm fucking a friend. Yeah, yeah, because I'm saying for me, I would need a reframe before I could actually fuck you. Mm. But like, for you, like, like uh, here's a different question, actually. Mm. Yeah, let's say, oh, what think, percent, uh, like, what percent of the population do you huh. think you could have sex with? And like, enjoy the sex. Oh, fuck. Uh, probably like, still a small percentage. Mm. Yeah. All right. I'm okay. So really no. picky. What, what, oh, no, but it's different from like, 
if, if if I'm friends with them, right? Compared to if they're just That's attractive true. or not. This is true. Um, like if, if I was to go down my my, my contact list, right, and, and these are all girls that I'm friends with, and all of a sudden, uh, it was just us two in the world. I'm like, do I, do I really have to reframe, or do I just have to wait until the sun settles? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, hang on. This is a different question now, but... Or, or do we just cut a little bit and like, yo... Oh. Yeah, yeah, so now yeah, that's my... Is, when we procreate, is it strictly, like, For business? the sake of humanity. Yeah, like, we're still friends, and we'll do this job together. Uh-huh. And then, but, like, like, like we don't, we're not going to get married. We do the job, and yeah. we stay friends. Like, no cuddling, no intimate... It's not like... It's not mm. like we're sharing a no, life I together. No, I think, I, think, I, think, oh. I think after a period of time, like, we're we going to need those cuddles. I think yeah. you're right. I, well, to be fair, like again, I've talked about this, but I I catch feelings. I'm a I'm a catch feelings girl. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it would happen. And then, especially when you're looking at yo, there's nobody else, right? Just that pure loneliness is gonna mm. kick in immediately. You know. That's interesting. But a better question is, if we were stuck on an island, how long? That's that's the thing we we don't know, right? We don't know how long. But it's like a deserted island. But we know there's signs of like life out there still. Mm. But we just that's a, that's a little different. This is interesting. Yeah. Mm, that, this is how God should raise at the club. <laughs> yeah, if we you were know, stuck on a deserted island together, inter- yeah, how how long you think it would take? Because <laughs> my the, I was to start hooking it up. Dude, this is how I know I'm cuffed. Because the first thing my head jumped into was I was like, how would John feel? I was like. I was like, if I was, if I disappeared, how long would John wait for me before mm. he moves on? Right, right, right. So if he would wait for me for like five years, I'm waiting five years. Maybe but how, how would you know that? that? Well, now I need to ask him. Now I need, Not, know, yeah. now I need to ask John how long he would wait for me. And then that's my answer on an island. If I'm stuck on an island, that's when. Like, I'm like, all right, John's done waiting. Okay. Well, it's that's. one of those things where he, he probably going to see a, a, a fucking... Some type of thing on, on, on social media. Oh, Rosie from Facebook go to CEO gone missing, All right? Yeah. And then, you know, maybe after after yeah. three months, they call off the search. Damn. Right. I think the second they call the search, oh, you you done for. You better. Damn. You I, better. I mean, that's that's what happened in Hunger Games. Cause okay, there's a bunch of talks about Hunger Games right now, right? But like Katniss and Peeta get sent off to play the games, yeah. right? And yeah, Katniss was was, Gail, was was with Gail. Mm. And now Gail's just watching the news. And Katniss and Peter are like lovers. And mm. Peter's like, oh yeah, the baby. Like, oh, shit. that sucks. This is a shitty situation, man. I mean, I'm a Peter girl all the way. But right, like, right. okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I would wait games. for John. Yeah, how long would you wait, wait, wait for him? Um, I would wait until my, my child, like until the limit of my childbearing years. So I'm 25. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. <laughs> okay, okay, let me read. Let me read. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a logical way t- to think about it. So I'm 25, it. and mm. I want to have kids between 30 to 35. Yeah. Because past 35, it like becomes much harder to have kids. And again, it's really important for me. Like I want, I yeah. want healthy children. So like. So 29, you're like fuck. Yeah, around like 30, 33. 33. I'm kind of oh, like... Oh, damn, you love, you love my man that much? You're, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, I want it to be John. Mm. But if I'm 33 now, and I only But you have- don't think, you don't think by like, like, like year two, I'm like, I'm getting fed up waiting. I'm going to start raising you up. <laughs> okay, well, that's a different story. Yeah. That's a different... I'm acting independent. But like, I mean, if you, right, if we fall in love, then we fall in love, and that's a different uh. story. Then it's like, then it's Candace and Peta. Then it's like sorry, Gail. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he literally died for me. Like he died. For, he like tried dying for her in the games. He was like, yeah. I'm gonna be. Fucking that man was yeah. That man Peta was risen her up. I would it's like Peta. That would work on me. I'm sorry. That would work fair, on me. Fair. Hey, uh, well, that was a that was a fun little podcast, huh? <laughs> right. Was that everything? I mean, we we could we could talk for fucking. That's ages, true. We could. So. I, I, we have, we have two more podcasts tomorrow, so I'm gonna save the mm-hmm. the breath and, and, and my my brain power, my my, my cells yeah. for for tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. It was fun. Thank you. Jo- no, it's cute. This is our first. I think just. No, we've no. Had, we we've, we've, that was we've a had, year ago had, though. But this. Is- no, we we had we had we had solo ones. We had we had a bunch of solo ones before. Really? 
Yeah. Why the well the I think this one is the first has like hosts like yeah, we're yeah, actually yeah. working uh, together. Yeah, it feels yeah, like yeah. a team. It, I like I don't feel like a guest. Like I feel like we're right, right, right. we're hanging out. So this was the first of that. Well, no, I mean at, at a certain point I I let you you know tell tell your stories and I let you it's, yeah yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, it was emotional in the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't ready. I I'm thought sorry. we going. Do- we, we were going. <laughs> you thought dive. it was just like, yeah. You thought it was just like a toxic little. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was. <laughs> oh, I've had crazy shit in my life. Yeah, which will we will get into in the future. But all right, well, that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching, and please like like the video and watch on listen to us on Spotify and Apple Music. That's it for us. Signing out. Peace.